I need some inspiration. Let's go get it. One of the things you got to do is you got to celebrate your successes along the way. All those small victories, all those wins. And I'm out here to do that. Get my feet wet. Blessed to be where I'm at. You know, I used to live in my car and I used to come here and be in that parking lot over here. And I used to wish I was in the spot that I'm in to this day. And I'm not where I really want to be right now. I'm definitely blessed and fortunate to be where I am. But I would say about four years ago, I wish I was doing what I'm doing today. And that's a victory, man. What's going on, everybody? It is Coach Greg Adams back in here with another YouTube live stream. Shout out to the Coach Gang. And that's you. For being in here, being involved, and being active on this YouTube channel. And welcome to the internationally known and recognized Wake Up Show. Part of the Free Agent Lifestyle Podcast here on the Free Agent Lifestyle Channel. You want to hear new, 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 new world order. With the Bruce Wayne, it is ish. The king of kings, the king of content, and the speaker of truth. Yours truly, the notorious one. New, 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 AKA new Mr. Order. Coach Alini, better known as the prognosticator, Coach Adamas. And you're in the Desert Storm bunker with EWF. That is every woman's fantasy. And... <laughs> The whole epic show, the Morpheus of the Mady Matrix, Gregorio Greybeard, Mr. Chocolate is Skin himself, the Unbinder and the CEO of Fix His Binds LLC, none other than the CGA and the Black Moses of this, and we call him C God Allah, and also known as the 10 time to monetize champion of YouTube. We are ready to go. And it's the weekend, you ninjas. What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? It is the weekend. Today's episode is Friday, if you're watching on the playback. Appreciate you for being here. We got a great show for you today. And we're going to give you an update on the Kiki Palmer situation. I did an emergency stream. Well, it wasn't an emergency stream. It was a stream in Audible. And we covered the Kiki Palmer situation last night, if you missed it. But today, we're going to show you. We have photo stills of what is a video of what looks like Kiki Palmer getting choke slammed to hell. All right, so we're going to talk about that and break down what we see, the earlier released inf images of what is going to be the doomsday for one Darius Jackson, I believe his last name is, ring the bell on that ninja because his reputation is pretty much drug in the mud. But I'm going to tell you what I see in the photos. All right, I don't see her getting choke slammed to hell. It is apparently getting choke slammed to hell. But we're going to tell you what I see in the video, in the footage there. All right. We're also going to cover why American women, American woman, just let me be he. American woman don't want to see he. Uh, 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 American women are experiencing 
burnout. All right, we're going to talk about that. They can't handle the truth in this particular day and age, and I'm going to show you the hypocrisy of this burnout that apparently, supposedly, American women are experiencing, not only in the workforce, but in relationship and just being a mammy out here. They can't even handle the bare minimum. Yes, indeed. We're going to talk about that. We got Straggle and Sniggle Theater. We got, uh, what else do we got here? We got Doom and Gloom CGA. Oh, man, it's going to be a great show. And uh, I hope this show, uh, I hope you're uplifted by this message that you hear here. Yes, indeed. All right. We lost a couple of hundred subscribers. All right. And we call them Mitch-ass ninjas. Uh, we, we glad that y'all gone. Finally, ninja. I hope y'all, I hope y'all gone for good. We lost a couple of 30 to 100 subscribers. And I hope y'all bitch ninjas never come back. All right, ninja. Mm. Anyone else missed yesterday's show and you want me to figure out if I want you here or not, I want you to go follow someone else. Ninja, we don't need you here. All right, bye-bye. Mm. All right, the Mitch ninjas is burnt out from CGA. <laughs> the Mitch ass ninjas was burnt out. They was like, I'm burned out, CGA. You were my last bash of the hope. All right, to make me feel good about myself, Ninja, we weeding out the week, Ninja. We getting you Caleb Williams ninjas up out of here, you Caleb Williams. Uh, anyway, we'll talk about that later on in the show. It's the purge. He said they still watching, though. They still watching from the sideline like this ninja clutching a pillow. They went to sleep like Stewie last night after my show. <laughs> ninjas went to sleep like Stewie. All right, clutching a pillow. <laughs> All right, Ninja, Mitch Ninja's going to be back. You know they know You know they know I'm on right now. They looking at they watch. They're like, CGA is on, but I'm protesting. Mm. <laughs> All right, we're quiet quitting CGA. All right, but they still watching. They're like, this Ninja going to be on for three and a half, four hours too. What am I going to do with my day? Ninja going to jerk off so much, pause to so much prawn. Them Ninja's going to have to come back by Monday morning. They're going to be like, oh, man, I didn't do nothing all weekend. I went and simping. I went and spent money out the bars. I worked on my mouthpiece. I got rejected 50, 11 times. Them Ninja's going to be back. Nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? Them Ninja's going to be back. Ninja, and I hope you come back stronger and better. Caleb Williams ass Ninja's. What's up with Caleb Williams? You see this ninja? You see Caleb Williams? All right, anybody don't follow football, and I think my heat is on right now. This is disgraceful. All right, I might have to take a break to turn my heater off. You see Caleb Williams from USC? I was quite critical. Wait a minute. Your, your I, was quite, at times. I was quite critical of him. He's the USC quarterback. You know, USC football, they be, they be playing on their tippy toes. All right, they be playing on their tippy toes, you know? I, I'm a fan of USC football since high school, but them ninjas is uh, prancers out there. Them ninjas ain't got no heart. <laughs> right? Them ninjas ain't got no heart. They always overrated. They're like, we're USC. Like, everybody going to lay down for them. And then they end up having a disappointing season, inevitably. All right, unless they cheated like, uh, you know, Pete Carroll. But then they inevitably have a disappointing season. They underperform. They underwhelming. And then they come up with 50-11 excuses. All right, as to why they didn't win, but they're USC, Ninja. You USC, you should win. Mm. I mean, you should win. You guys are underwhelming. You underperform every year. All right, so Caleb Williams is the quarterback. He transferred in. I think he was going to Oklahoma. I can't remember. Then the Oklahoma coach came over, and then he followed him over. All right, very good. He won the Heisman Trophy. All right, but these prancing-ass ninjas at USC, yeah, I'm talking to you. These prancing-ass ninjas at USC, they be over there getting ran over by everybody. Washington ran them over. Colorado almost beat them, came back by 511 points. All right, they done lost three games, and Caleb Williams is in the stand cuddling with his mama. All right, like Stewie. Caleb Williams went up like Stewie. Hold on, let me show you a live picture of the video here. I, I don't know if the NCAA will allow me to show video of Caleb Williams after his game. All right, and then just coming out to defend, defend him. All right, hold on for a second. <laughs> People coming out to defend him. Oh, man, he left it out there. He was showing emotion. Ninja, he about to be the quarterback of an NFL franchise. He loses one stinking game, and the ninja up there like this, all right? <laughs> ninja went back. That's how Caleb Williams went back. And, Ninja, we can criticize that monkey-ass ninja. He making millions of dollars and won the Heisman Trophy. Ninja crying. And then he comes back and doubles down on it and says, well, I just want to cuddle with my dog and watch Netflix. Oh, Ninja. All right, come on, man. 
And then he follows it up. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't think it could get any worse. But then he follows it up with ye old worst excuse in history. And I've been told y'all, Ninja. I've been told y'all. Then he follows it up and says he has mental health issues. Ninja, send it. Send it, Ninja. Send it, send it. We done with this crybaby ass, prancing ass, painting finger no- fingernails and finger toes ass Ninja. Unbelievable, Ninja. You supposed to be the, the image of what? Now you got mental health now? Ninja, you lost three games, and now you got mental health. Oh, my God. This is, man, I swear to God, this generation. Oh, the humanity. I swear to God, this generation. <laughs> Please do not come from the Raiders, Ninja. You, can, you cannot play for the Raiders. We don't want this, Ninja. S-A-W-F-T. Soft, Ninja. Oh, S-A, what is it? S-A-W-F-T. Soft. These prancing ass ninjas around here. What are we doing? This. What are we doing? Ninja, you can't handle any adversity. These people can't have, you generation ass Z ninjas can't handle no adversity in life. Zero. Mm. And, and, if, and if this is going to be the picture of mental health, Ninja, I'm done with y'all ninjas. Ninja, I'm done forever. You can't ever, ever bring that shit up again. What? <laughs> Fucking, hey, man. I don't know what to do with these people. They don't take no accountability. They don't want to be, nobody want to lead. They only want, when they winning, it's all good. When you cashing them NIL checks, it's all good. Now these bitch ninjas, as soon as they get a little bit of adversity, these ninjas (laughs) going full Stewie ass ninjas. Oh my God, man. I have a young man that I'm raising. You know what I mean? I have a young man that I'm raising. Let me just tell you, man. I'm trying to prevent him from being like these punk ass Gen Z's. All right, I'm trying to I'm trying to prevent him because Ninja, you gonna win, you gonna win. <laughs> these punk ass Gen Z's, man, talking about mental health, Ninja, and you making millions of dollars, Ninja, and you about to be the number one draft pick. See, I'm trying. Yeah, Ninjas is turning into hoes at this point because I'm trying to get my young man to know. Look at these weak ass Ninjas. You know how easy it is to win, Ninja. The bar is low. Ninja, you can win out here just doing a bare minimum. Shit. <laughs> this is crazy. I can't stand these goofy ass people. How would you, why would you promote that and you're going to be the number one pick? You're going to cry when you lose. Oh, my Lord. And people out here trying to co sign it. And once you co sign it, it's going to get worse. Just so you know, this ninja going to be walking around here. Oh, Ninja, I done lost. I play for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yo, e- did you? There's about 10 teams he can't play for. The Eagles, the Raiders, Ninja, image-wise, image-wise, you can't play. He can play for the Denver Broncos or somebody, all right? Mm. Image-wise, you can't even play for certain teams. Ninja, we going to whip your ass. Matter of fact, let me stop, man. Let me get back to the show. The show's already going off the rails. Anybody co-signing that bullshit? Oh, man, come on, man. Athletes supposed to be emotional. They supposed to leave it out in the field. He went and cuddled with his mom after the game. <laughs> Bruh, I tried to let that slide. I didn't let it slide. I did criticize him, but y'all then just came out to save him. Then he wanted to cuddle with his dog. Then he wants to say mental health issues. Oh, y'all going to keep co-signing this bitch ninja? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> he done. We done. All right, anyway. It's, it, it's interesting. Y'all going to keep co-signing this bullshit, huh? And they going to keep doubling down on stupidity. Let me tell you how to contribute to today's show. Dollar sign the notorious CGA on the cash app. Vimo, Coach Greg Adams TV. Wait a minute. Yeah, Coach Vimo is Coach Greg Adams TV. PayPal, PayPal. Dot me backslash Coach Greg Adams. And that be pinned to the top of the live chat on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel. And you can super chat on the notorious new, 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 new world. CGA channel. Gen Z don't want to win out here. They just want to be handed doves. We're going to talk about this when we talk about burnout. All right. These women burning out. They just don't. Nobody wants to take no L's. All right. I've been taking L's all my life. I just started to kind of win. As soon as you win, I'm just going to let you know. Ninja people coming after you. All right. Here we go. All right, shout out to Albert Wesker says, I work in healthcare and can tell you most women are about to snap like Kim Shamrock. When you're about to put you in the ankle lock, they are suffering bad. They down bad. 
ladies, what's going on? You okay? And then just ba- women coming over wanting to cuddle. Oh, man, I had this lady over, Snow Bunny. All, well, she wasn't a Snow Bunny because you never mind. <laughs> all right, this normally means much art. But she was out, legs all on me, cuddled up like a ball, feet out. I was over there looking at her feet, feet all out on my, sitting on my lap. I'm just looking at them feet like, Lord have mercy. I wanted to take a picture. But they out here down bad. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. I'm going to tell you why. We're going to read the article here. Daniel McGee, what's up? Coach Gregorio in the building. He says, can't wait to do another coaching call with you. And ready for the new content coming in 2024. Shout out to the sports car. Gang, gang in the building. Appreciate you, man. I'm going to get to those coaching calls maybe in a month or two. Ninja got a case. All right, Ninja got a case. JC says, Coach, how is it that my ex wants to give me more peace leave now that she is engaged than she did when she was with me? I told her to contact me. Don't contact me. I think you meant I told her to don't contact me ever again. I think that's what it is. All right, I think that's what you meant. But, uh, yeah, it's what it is, man. It's what it is. Jeff, the producer, hashtag Coach Gang Yang, hashtag Becca Gang, free agent lifestyle for life. That's how we do it. <laughs> AC took my Juco out last night, and boy, you were right about that zaddy ish being real. He says there was a white chatty there. He says Owiga was about your age, bearded, in shape, and had a comb over. Dude was cleaning up out here. Get him, daddy. Hey, man. Don't let these people fool you. Uh, women in general, they be liking older ninjas, all right? Young men, don't don't think I'm lying here. Wait till you get a little bit older. But your girl like to put rubber hands through my beard, and then she goes back to you. She goes back to you and, and wastes your time. But it is what it is out there. But listen, we ain't trying to prove. And if you wanted receipts, uh, you got to come over to Locals. Because Locals be Liddy, CoachGregAdams.Locals.com is the place to be on Sunday morning. And we will be back Sunday morning. Indeed, shout out to Terrell McAdams. Happy Vets Day to all my troop. Happy birthday to the Marines. hoo in the building. Is that what they say? hoo Shout out to the Marines. Happy birthday to all the vets. I'm oh, sorry. Happy Vets Day. It is observed on tomorrow. And I might pop up for a short show tomorrow to honor our veterans. I'm trying to figure out when I can fit it in. That's what he said. Riz Khalifa told my wife I was filing for divorce. She asked me to wait to not disrupt the kid's current state. I smell a Kiki Palmer finesse. Stay focused, bros. 100%. 100%. A lot of guys, you, you know, now that you've, uh, you know, you've basically, um, you basically uh, showed her what you're going to do. She going to, she going to sneak attack you. All right, so watch out. Justin 0304 is out here taking souls like Shang Tsung. Not sure who that is, but shout out to you. Charles Brown, coach, I'm here for it all. Let's go. We ready. We ready. Cody Draper, coach, I agree with you. I think we as men should let women be broke and not receive alimony after divorce. I agree with that. Alimony should be abolished. All right, in this current state and time, but now that women are breaking down, and I'm going to tell you why, it is probably not going to happen. JG, men came back from war, and if men struggle, they were shown a bridge, a park bench, and a bottle of cooking wine. He says men try, wait, sorry, women tired of the cock carousel, and we're crying about trauma and mental health. Men, this ain't for you. And he says, it's a trap. And I messed it up, but I get what you're saying there. It ain't for you. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to boil it down, and I'm going to just be a little bit, give harsh criticism to the American women who, who are complaining about the current state. And we're going to tell you what it's about. Carter says CGA is going to be David Goggins fit after all the, um, all the victory laps. Let me say it again. CGA is going to be David Goggins fit after all these victory laps. Ninjas really out here giving up leverage and... Getting got, he says, bet money, those picks of Kiki wrestling for her phone. Facts. That's what I'm going to tell you. He says, not playing a video as suspects. I'm going to tell you, that, that, those images, I did not get triggered by those images. I'm going to tell you what those images represent, and he just told you right there. He just told you. 
And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to break it down. And I'm not going to make any excuses. I always tell the truth. People saying it looks like she's getting beat up. I don't think so. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you and I'll prove it. Shout out to JC Coach. I, do, I domesticated a six-foot Mastodon at Money Tree or Dollar Tree last night. Thank you for uh, making me read that. And I got a few more, man. But look, I got to get to this part of the show. I do want to first acknowledge that it is Flatback Friday. Let's go ahead and acknowledge the fact that it's Flatback Friday out here. And live from Mykonos, Greece. Flatback Friday is in full effect. This is your day, ladies. This is your day. This is the day we honor the Flatback Supremes, the high-class escorts, the women with no buttocks, all right, the slimmies, the women maybe with the fake bolt-ons, the women with pretty much not much hips, the women with them long-ass toes, all right, the flatbacks out here with the high ponytails, the cooperative women, the women that drop neck at no they don't make no excuses. The nasty girls of the day, the internationally known, all right, the internationally known slim women, the rich man's treat, the rich man's delicacy. The, all right, there they are right there. It is Flatback Friday, ninja. I know, they made my type, coach. Well, that's because you broke, all right, more than likely, ninja, because you know you can't get up in there. All right, you ain't got enough dough up in the building to get in there. Listen, Ninja, to be like, oh, man, them girls ain't the real. They don't go. You never will know, Ninja, because you will never be on the boat or the yacht. All right, that's where it is. So go ahead with your obese women and your obese fetish. The Flatback Supreme still reigns supreme as the standard of excellence. Even the nasty girls. Anyway, Mykonos, Greece, Flatback Supremes out here. The neck droppers with that long-ass neck. Them long neck ass chicks. That's two necks. All right, Kiki Palmer don't got but one neck. Them flat back Supremes be having two neck hands. We're at work. <laughs> All right, the show is off the rails already. Okay, here we go right here. Pro blacks are irate. Doom and gloom CGA. Doom and Gloom, CGA, back in the building. We got a couple of crazy-ass stories, man. We in here. Ninja said, you a self-hater. Ninja, them ain't my people. <laughs> All right? Ninja, they, how do you watch my show and say I hate myself? Look at me, Ninja. What? You mean I hate, I hate people that look like me? Well, that's your problem. <laughs> I pretty much only like myself. So anyway, uh, anyway, pro-blacks are irate. Doom and Gloom CGA. All right, let's get into it here. This will be, this will be probably something that is going to, what is this here? All right, get off my screen. Be, pay attention, Ninja. Women are out here on the hustle. They trying to get the bag. So uh, you already know Al Pacino got hooked and crooked. Robert De Niro's ex-wife drove him crazy. And now Robert De Niro's assistant sued his monkey ass for $1.2 million, Ninja. The hustle game is out here. Listen to let you know, gentlemen. I hate, why is that advert all in the middle of my screen? I hate when they do that. Robert De Niro, actor's company, must pay former assistant $1.2 million, Ninja. And, of course, who is it that sued him? What do you think the gender of the one? Wait, what do you think the gender of the person was? That sued him. What do you think? What do you think the gender of is the woman that sued him? I already messed it up. It's a woman, and guess what? It's a milly mouth muskrat. God dang, ninja. All right, man. Gotta get my bag and run. <laughs> man, you can't trust nobody out here. You can't trust nobody. These women is trying to survive. What did I tell you? And we keep reviewing you. Women are in survival mode. They trying to get that bag. Gotta get my bag and run. They gone, no, it's a white woman. They Listen, white women are the queens of taking your ass to court. Black woman, you know, I guess Robert De Niro's woman was black. But white woman gonna take you to court and sue the pants off of you, ninja. Wow. And look at this. She was, uh, let me see. Let me read the article and see. How this woman stabbed him in the back, and apparently Robert De Niro was pissed. It says Robert De Niro's company must pay an ex 
former employee $1.2 million over claims of gender discrimination and retaliation. The jury's decision ended a years-long legal battle between actor in a one and uh, Graham Chase Robinson. What? Her name is Graham? Okay. That began after her resignation from Canal Productions. Ms. Robinson had sued for $12 million, mm. alleging she was abused, demeaned, underpaid, and treated like De Niro's office wife. But jurors did not find the actor personally liable in the civil trial. But Ms. Robinson was on De Niro's payroll for 11 years. Ninja, protect mm. your neck. 11 years. It says right here, hired as a personal assistant in 2008 or a secretary. She was later promoted to vice president of productions and finance at the company. See, this is why this is why companies don't are they don't want to promote women. They gonna eventually sue you. And minorities and women, mainly black men, black black people and women, they gonna sue you if you promote their ass up. And uh, case in point, the football coach from the Miami Dolphins. All right, what's his name? All right. So watch out, man. This is why people are reluctant to hire y'all, motherfuckers. All right, because then first time you're uh, the first time you're not happy, you're gonna sue. Uh, but after quitting in 2019, she sued for emotional distress and reputational harm, claiming he was often made vulgar, inappropriate, and gender comments, and assigned her stereotypical female tasks. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, he's abusive and told sexist jokes. He insisted that he was never abusive. He probably yelled and screamed. I'm pretty sure that he looks like he did. And by the way, I don't really like Robert De Niro as a persona. All right. Because he's a big old guy with Trump derangement syndrome. All right. He's a big old phony ass goofy liberal. So, you know, the chickens come home to roost. And it says right here, he insisted he never was abusive while he admitted he was at times had a bad temper. He denied Miss Robinson's allegations. Canal countersued for $6 million, accusing her from misusing office funds, stealing company property, and transferring more than $450,000 in airline miles to her personal account. So guess what? Mm. She was a thief. She was a five-finger discounter. She was a crook. She was an embezzler, of course. That's why she got fired. She didn't quit. She was about to get fired because she got caught stealing. All right. And she was transferring money and moving that shit around. But after eight days of testimony and five hours of deliberation over the dueling claims, the jury did not find Miss Robinson liable for any of Canal's financial misconduct claims. Okay. The narrow was not in the courtroom when the verdict was read aloud. And it said right here, Miss Robinson was seen smiling as the decision was handed down and hugging her lawyers after jurors left the room. She got that mm. money, ninja. Gotta get my bag and run. <laughs> Yikes. All right, and then I guess it says right here, her lawyers told the BBC pause that he was delighted that the jury saw what we saw. Now, I guess Robert De Niro was in the courtroom and he told the woman, it says right here, in a dramatic outburst in a, um, when he testified, he looked directly at her and shouted, shame on you across the courtroom. Okay. He admitted that he asked her to scratch his back at least on two occasions, but dismissed the question about it being or by saying, okay, twice you got me. Okay, all right. He asked to scratch her back. But but the point of it is, Ninja, women are survival mode. If you were a guy, if you were a guy and you, you know, you want to ascend to heights, you want to get your back up, you want to make more money, you want to be at the upper echelon, you want to be at the top. One thing you must understand is you're going to get sued especially mostly by women. Women are going to sue you, all right? Your baby mama's going to sue you. Your wife is going to sue you potentially through a divorce. I mean, you got a high chance of that. If you employ women and it goes left, this is a woman that worked for 11 years. I don't know what she put up with. Sound like it was just a standard work situation. She's somewhat frivolous with it. She sued for $11 million and only got one and a half. I mean, that's typically what happens here. He could have settled the case, but he went in there to fight for his reputation. You're going to get sued. You have to protect yourself at all times. Never trust anyone, even the people that are supposedly loyal. Oh, my, my, my loyal personal assistant, I promoted her up. She's going to be ever loyal to me. Nope. And don't do people uh, wrong, right? That's the point of that show. Doom and Gloom CGA, next segment in the United Kingdom, UK. University to offer postgraduate degree in witchcraft 
and the occult. All right, boy. We're going there, man. We're going there. And shout out to all the Harry Potters out here. Apparently, we're going full Harry Potter. All right, witchcraft and the occult. We're going to be conjuring up spirits. We're going to be summoning spirits. We're going to be casting spells. Magic, mystic, magic. What you going to do? Think before you step before the rebel, silly mortal you. All right, that's where we're going right now. All right, the University of Exeter will be offering the master degree beginning in September 24 amid a recent surge in interest in the history of witchcraft and magic. It says right here, it says an associate professor in medieval Arabic literature. Mm. Oh, my goodness. And graduated from college with my bachelor's at 20 with a degree in communication sciences with an emphasis in speech and language pathology. All right, what is a degree? What is a professor in medieval Arabic literature? Boy, I bet you she makes a lot of money. All right, it says the course will explore magic's influence on society and science through the lens of Jewish. Wait a minute, I can't say that. I'm not going to say what race, what people, we know I can't say that. And it says Christian and Islamic traditions and all of that in a bag of chips ahoy. But just let you know, man, we go into an interesting time. Certainly, certainly people are interested in some other things. We're going crazy here. All right, but uh, okay. Next one, doom and gloom here. Oh, remember somebody just shared with me. There's going to be a trailer. Remember I was telling you about the movie Inside Out? Uh, this is a Gen Z movie, right? And the gen, the movie is about uh, the emotions that you experience, the voices in your head, all right? The voices in your head, your brain chemistry. And they'd be like, you have voices in your head. And then they're like, all these emotions are trying to fight to get for, uh, front position. And then that we're repressing emotions to get the emotions to run. Remember I told you about that? Well, apparently somebody let me know. Inside Out 2 is coming out. Now, Gen Z is, loves this. They eat it up. All right? Parents of Gen Z, they love this movie. They be eating it up because they believe it's based on science. And they're like, this is me. I have voices in my head. All right? I have voices in my head, too. All right? People that, you know, just can deal with their feelings and don't want to deal with reality at all. My feelings say. Well, they have Inside Out 2 coming out, and I'm going to run the trailer right here. I'm going to run it. All right, even though Disney might not want me to run it. All right, I'm going to run it. Let's run it. Let's do it live. Inside, Inside Out 2 is coming out, I guess, this winter or next summer. Oh, yeah, summer 2024. And, of course, there's a new emotion. Mm. What emotion? What emotion do you think they're going to introduce now? All right, so Disney has went from the princess relationship fantasy and now they're going to go to the, we're going to influence you by, you know, propaganda, like the anti-pale Snow White, like the Jasmine, I mean, like the uh, Ariel that's black. We're also going to tell people your emotions matter, your feelings. What new emotion do you think they're going to introduce, man? Nah, depression was already in there. Dep depression was already kind of in the first one, but it's certainly in the second one. What emotion? Somebody said gay. Nope. The new emotion is anxiety. Anxiety is the new um, brothers. Let's watch the clip here. Let's watch the clip. Uh, fair use to Disney. We're going to play the clip and show you kind of what they're teaching young people about feelings and emotions. All right. So let's play the video. <laughs> Now, I will have to stop it because of fair use. But watch this. The little voices inside your head. New, 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 new world order. The little voices inside your head. Now, I don't know if you know, all crazy people say they hear voices inside their heads. I hear voices inside my head. All right, so let's continue. I'm going to have to, it's a, it's a minute long, but of course, I'm not supposed to be playing this, so I have to pause it. The, the voices inside your head know you inside and out. Oh, man, new, like, new, 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 new world order. man, I don't know, bruh. Like, I'm not feeling this shit. I, I get what they're trying to say, but bruh. All right, let's continue here and uh, go, go ahead. Our little girl's growing up so fast. And things couldn't be better. Why 
What is that? <laughs> All right, so let me stop it right here. <laughs> let me stop it right here. So I don't know if you noticed, they have a female character. The female character turns 13. All right, and the magical age of 13 is very symbolic. Uh, a lot of young women change dramatically after 13. There's movies named 13 that, that kind of talk about this. Women become promiscuous. Not all. Uh, women start to experience sexuality at 13, right? And then they go off the deep end. Some women start doing drugs, all right? Even Nia Long said this, right? So um, they start dating bad boys. So 13 is pivotal. That's, that's a jump from um, preteen to adolescence, and they start to grow and develop and develop feelings. So your kid, basically what the clip said at that point, hey, everything was good. I was still a kid. Then I went into adolescence and the hormones start kicking in. And then now you're going to see all the crazy shit happen. Now, um, this is true of a lot of young women and men. But I just want to come back. And again, I'm being very conscious of what I'm doing here because this is fair use. This is Disney. These are the emotions here. All right, all of these represent a certain emotion, fear, uh, anger, happiness, like scared. So this is what you're seeing here. Now, let's go back into where everything changes for this person. I, I, okay, let's I'm definitely going to get a fair use. It's demo day. All right, I'm definitely going to get a fair use in the music here. All right, I got to turn it down because the music is going to give me a fair use for sure. Uh, but here we go. Wait, 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 you, you, All right, so everything's being reconstructed. All right, so inside your head, you're going cuckoo. Inside your hair, you're going cuckoo. All right, so let's continue here. Orange? Who made the console orange? Do I look orange? I didn't touch it. Orange is not my color. Not me. Hello. Ah! Oh, my gosh. I'm anxiety. Where can I put my stuff? A new emotion. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry. We wanted to make such a good first impression. Uh, what do you mean, we? All right, let me stop right there. All right, so anxiety. So for young people who are going to watch this, most of them are going to be something like age 5 to 12, 5 to 15. You see, they're, they're pushing this hard. New, 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 new so world order. most people, <laughs> most people that are in this age that are going to watch this are going to be way younger than 12, way younger than 13. So now they're going to kind of let them know that anxiety, you're going to hear a young kid at seven saying, I'm, I, have, I'm, I have anxiety, <laughs> right? So this is what you're going to see. And then as you see, when they get into their teens, this is for Gen Alpha, as they get into their teens, they're going to be fully, fully embracing that they have these emotional breakdowns. They have anxiety, stress. I mean, seven and eight-year-olds. We have a Caleb Williams that's a fully grown-ass adult talking about mental health based on his football performance that he lost. And so they're going to be like, boom, all right, I need drugs for my anxiety. They're going to be eight years old. You see where this is going. You see? New, 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 new world order. You see where this is going? They're doubling down. They're doubling down, tripling, quadrupling down on this. And so now you're going to see this. I, 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 just, I just don't see where accountability, I just don't see where accountability and uh, people accepting their responsibilities of re their reality, I don't see where this is going to come back, right? It's never going to be a thing anymore for most people. They're just going to be able to just switch back. And then the dependency on things they're just gonna they're just gonna eventually just give up and just be sedated as opposed to push through overcome adversity see overcoming adversity is important to me it's important to me because i think that's how you break have your breakthroughs you don't have breakthroughs by becoming a, a patient a customer by just accepting your circumstances and never pushing through finding excuses for why you're not where you are I don't find, and so I would be saying that if I found a couple seven-year-olds that said they have anxiety, that's fine. Now you're going to push it to the masses, and now every seven-year-old is going to have anxiety. Mm. Every seven-year-old is going to reach for medicine, all right, in Big Pharma. So this is where we are. Just so you know, I never have been wrong. I will not steer you wrong. They are not going to push this to the younger population of people, and this is going to be reality moving forward. These kids are going to be fat pill poppers, excuse makers and so forth and so on. That's where we're going. 
That's where we're going. So we better get into it right now. And speaking of 92% of Americans, adults say they prefer to date people who have been to therapy. Listen, new, 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 new world order. That's where we're going, man. We're going there. We're going there. And this is according to a study or a survey where they surveyed some people here. And this is where we're going. This is where we're going, guys. Listen, you can believe what you believe about it. But now we're going to the point where if you don't have it, if you're staying tall, if you're tough and you're pushing through it, all right, you're undateable now. You're unrelatable now. If you're not claiming to lean on, yeah, I have. Remember, this is an identity to people. This isn't a disease. This isn't something they're going through. This is now their identity. And so they're just saying this is my identity, and thus I can relate to you if you feel down bad too if you reach out for so-called help too if you reach out for work too but if you're a person that says no man i stand tall on my square all right i pushed through it i overcame adversity all right i did not have to if you just feel confident about yourself right (laughs) right they're gonna be like nah man you ain't ready to be out here all right you have issues they're gonna gaslight you they're gonna do what i call the unethical thing and suggest that you do it Okay, because it's unethical to tell people to do it. It's unethical to suggest people to do it. Now, if you're if you have an intervention with a family member that needs help, that's something else. But it's actually unethical for even a professional and certainly a civilian to tell somebody they need to go. Right. You can suggest it as a thing, but to make a person go suggest that they go shame them if they don't go. This is against ethics of this particular system. And every pseudo psychologist knows this. And I find it offensive that people keep using this as a sword. And then now they're going to keep you out of the dating marketplace. All right. As potential dates by unethically swinging this sword at you. All right. So these are sick people who do this. All right. These are sick people who do this, and they do this as a means to say, hey, I'm a loser. Are you a loser, too? That's what they're saying. Mm. Somebody says survey is fake, coach. Ninja. It's, it is what it is. Surveys are surveys. Did you read the survey? Ninja said survey is fake. Survey is being promoted as real. Is real. It is real. It's real. All right. Is real. Mm. All right, uh, speaking of new, 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 new world order. Listen to this. Take a listen to this. Uh, you will find this interesting. This is apparently the president of El Salvador. I, I try to say it with my accident. El Salvador. I can't say it. Listen to what he has to say. President of El Salvador who turned that country from the murder capital of the world to 300 homicide-free days. The demise of the U.S. has to come from within. Right. The enemies have to be inside, not not really outside. No 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 external enemy can, could can cause so much damage as internal. It's an internal operation. And you're you're watching internal operations here. You you can see them in, the, in cities, cities that were pristinely beautiful 30 years ago, are wastelands right now. You can see people. I mean, I'm from El Salvador, a third world country in Central America, and myself, I can see cities here and say I don't want to, I want to live here so that, that would be unthinkable three decades ago totally unthinkable that a Salvadoran wouldn't want to live in a U.S. city in a U.S. main city I mean, Los Angeles New York, Chicago, Chicago. Yeah. Well, uh, Philadelphia Baltimore when you look at how the cities are eroding so fast this has to be by design I mean, who, who, I mean, who would make so many stupid decisions? Like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna give you money for drugs. But really, they're doing that. In some cities, they're giving people drugs. I mean, they're literally giving people drugs in some U.S. cities. Or they say, okay, we're gonna give you money if you don't work. Or we're gonna, you know, they make all of these laws that make no sense. Man, ninja. New, 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 new world order. I'm telling you, anybody with any common sense can see this. I know he's like, bro, this don't even make no sense. He has hit the nail on the head. All right. He's hit the nail on the head. He was like, dude, this would not even happen. This would have to be by design. Somebody would intentionally have to be doing this. And I agree. I agree. (laughs) All right. 
There cannot be any better way to even describe what he's talking about. He's like, what? You giving people money for drugs? You're telling people they're sick, mentally health. You're you're giving money. You're letting this happen. You're letting this happen. This is straight facts. Straight facts. And people keep trying to find all of these dudes, these social workers and these pseudo psychologists, man. I don't know why anybody listens to them. I don't. They don't have any credibility with me. They almost all of them lack credibility with me. They're going to have to really earn my credibility because I see the stupid shit they come up with. And I'd be like, I, I can't even believe you're saying this. Like, they're like, it's actually more safe if we give the drug, the drug pushers needles. It's safer for everybody. Just like, <laughs> like, all right. I don't know what study you have, but this is the destruction. It's self-destruction. Where's the lie? President of El Salvador who turned that country from the murder capital of the world to 300 homicide-free days. The demise of the U.S. has to come from within. Right? The enemies have to be inside, not, not really outside. No, no, no external enemy can, could, can cause so much damage as internal. It's an internal operation. And you're, and you're watching internal operations here. You, you can see them in, the, in cities, cities that were pristinely beautiful 30 years ago are wastelands right now. You will see people, I mean, I'm from El Salvador, third world country in Central America, and myself, I can see cities here and say, I don't wanna, I wanna live here. So that, that would be unthinkable three decades ago, totally unthinkable. That a Salvadoran wouldn't wanna live in a U.S. city, in a U.S. main city, I mean, Los Angeles, San New York, Francisco, Chicago, yeah. well, uh, Philadelphia, Baltimore. When you look at how the cities are eroding so fast, this has to be by design. I mean, who? who I mean, who would make so many stupid decisions? Yeah. Like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna give you money for drugs. But really, they're doing that. In some cities, they're giving people drugs. I mean, they're literally giving people drugs in some U.S. cities. Or they say, okay, we're gonna give you money if you don't work. Or we're gonna. You know, they make all of this laws that make no sense. Bruh, dude, I mean, listen, there ain't a lie up in there. <laughs> and uh, guys, I, I see this. I've been seeing it for decades. And I've been here to tell you, he sees it. But when I see people say, we need universal basic income, we need to be quitting, quiet quitting, lazy quitting. We have people claiming to have mental health issues, but they're drug addicts and alcoholics. And then they're giving drugs, right? This is the, this is, Absolute insanity. Absolute insanity. I've been telling you. New, 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 new world order. We have people jumping on pharmaceutical drugs for their, they can't even cope. They're burning out. This is all just crazy to me. It's absolutely crazy. And I'm like, dude, this is how you weaken the people. You got Caleb Williams running around here like a fugitive from a slave plantation. He can't even uh, cope through a couple of football losses. And he got to jump right into Big Pharma. I'm going to just. New, 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 new world <laughs> order. Jesus, I feel bad for a lot of people, but then again, I don't. That was doom and gloom for the day. Yep, you got you to promise the uh, losers that you'll help them out. I got to get to some Super Chats real quick. And uh, before, you know what I mean? I'm the, new, this is new, why. New, new, hey, new by the way, this order. is why I'm the 10 time to monetize champion of YouTube. Not many YouTubers, even the so-called red pillars, will touch this subject matter. They too busy making diss videos on each other. All right? They, they will never touch this. They scared to touch it. They scared. They be like, oh, I don't want to lose my monetization. Scared. All right? And they too busy uh, trying to worry about somebody else's wedding and shit like this. I mean, they, they're completely distracted. And, of course, they probably disagree with me. You just don't understand. I understand weakness. <laughs> All right? Shout out to Juco. Says, love you, coach. You my favorite African American out here. Oh, look at my African American yeah. over here. Look at him. Are Thank you me. the greatest? You know what I'm talking Simon about? Simon Driver says, your show on hypergamy was powerful. Thank you. I'm going to start putting clips back on the Coach Greg Adams channel, but uh, because I know I haven't been doing it. But uh, yeah, we're going to get it back on. That clip, that show about hypergamy, there were so many good points in there. And then I had to yell at the weak ninjas in the, in the stream. But if you missed the show on hypergamy, why hypergamy is good, go look it up. Shout out to our brother, Crickshire, says first time donating to the best show on YouTube. Can I get the Kanye? Indeed. 
I'm not going to say what race, what people. We know I can't say that. By the way, there's a clip that is very Kanye related that I was going to play, but I can't play that one on YouTube. I'm going to have to play that one on Locals because that one is whoo way. All right. Now, that one will get me booted off YouTube if I play that clip. <laughs> All right. But anyway, shout out to Avery in the building says saving lives. Appreciate you, man. We back. We bizzack. We back in black. All right. We got our brother here. Uh, Larry. Larry C says just landed in Nebraska for a week long work conference. Could the chocolatey Confucians, Confucius do me a solid and take me out with the chicken bock? <laughs> Followed by the Undertaker Bell. A week-long conference in Nebraska. Woo-wee! He says, thank you, Coach. I will not ask where you are in Nebraska because I don't want to reveal your location. But a week-long conference in Nebraska, listening to people all day. The chicken bock is going to be out of control, man. Make sure you drink plenty of coffee, cups of coffee because you're going to need it. All right, You're going to be out. Shout out to uh, our brother, Brayon. Greetings, coach. I just want to say thank you. I just want to say you and Kevin Samuels help realize that I'm a Mitch-ass ninja. Coach, every day I'm working to get the Mitch-ass out of my system. Pause. And he says, so, coach, keep your foot on my neck. Appreciate you, man. And um, um, for the guys who, for the guy, I appreciate you putting me in the echelon of Kevin Samuels because he's, has a very good reputation in the in the sphere. But here's the thing. Here's the sad thing about Kevin Samuels is that a lot of the things he said that men did not like, then eventually women did not like, because we have to remember Kevin was very harsh on men initially in his transition from being a clothing designer or clothing uh, promoter. He started his harsh reality wake-up call to men. A lot of men didn't like it. Then he kind of pivoted to women inadvertently because women started to ask to find high value men. But it wasn't until he died that people then found out that a lot of the things he said were true. And then they appreciated his efforts that he made in the short amount of time that he made it right. He only had that message going for about a year and a half. I mean, it started to gain prominence for about a year and a half. It was somewhat short-lived. If you consider his impact, he was only, he only, he, he was kind of like the Tupac of the sphere, right? Tupac wasn't around relatively for that long, especially being popular. It was really for about three, four, five years. It seemed like for an eternity. Kevin Samuels is the same thing. He really only put out a year and a half worth of this content that he's known for. But people did not even realize how powerful he was until he died, which is sad. That's what it has to take for a lot of people. They got to wait till somebody dead, all right, to realize how important his message is. And I hope you don't realize that about me. Yeah, I was on this message before him just saying, but yeah, we're not, we don't want to talk about that. But, but the reality is this is how we treat our people. It's like, we got to wait till y'all dead to go, oh, yeah. Oh, maybe he was right. And then, and then you cause that ninja to have a heart attack. Mm. Trying to help y'all ninjas out. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, anyway. He had to wait till this ninja had a coronary. And his carotid artery filled up from yelling at y'all. And yelling at these women trying to get him in line. And he, he done went out. Somebody said the big booty assassin. <laughs> All right. Anyway, had to wait till some bitch slipped him a Mickey. All right. And took his ass out. Why he tried to hang. It's sad, man, but we don't want that. We want people to actually recognize the truth as the truth speaker is speaking it. Ninja, I don't want a mural on the wall. I don't want to be a mural. Ninja, I want y'all to acknowledge me <laughs> right now. All right. Anyway, shout out to you. J. Cool says, coach, hit me. Up with the Reverend X and it's the weekend. Well, we'll give you the weekend because I Reverend X is a special one. He should make only special appearances. What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? All right. We in here. Ninjas only want to give flowers when the casket drops. <laughs> All right. Here we go right quick. All right. Anyway. 
All right, shout out to Kaylin says, what's up, coach? In honor of Flatback, he says, Flatback, Flatback Friday. I think it's Flatback, Flat. He says, I want to know who's your favorite Flatback of all time. Mm. Mm. Damn, I have to think about that. But uh, I will say, I'm not a big celebrity person. All right, I always look at celebrity women as ran through. And once they become popular, I can never really like them like that. So I'm rarely ever going to be like, oh, you know what I mean? This celebrity or that celebrity. Once they reach celebrity status, I really can't see them that way. So I like regular women, as I keep telling you. So I've seen some flatbacks that I would love to have that probably nobody ever know about that was a regular chick, right? She's just a regular chick, but celebrity women don't do it for me. So I really can't say. But, um, you know, if I look up a Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition, I'm sure I could come up with a couple. And Olivia Dunn does it for me. Yeah, Olivia Dunn is, I need to come up with the Flatback Hall of Fame, but Olivia Dunn is something else, man. She is something else. That girl right there is amazing, man. <laughs> All right, listen. All right, I just don't want her to talk. If, that, if we can get her to not talk, <laughs> if we can get, you know, and, 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 and ladies be like, why do you want your women to not talk? Ladies, do you, uh, can I tell you something, ladies? Are there any ladies here? I know they're here. By the way, Heather Locklear is a good one. I actually met her in person. Denise Richards in her prime was fantastic. All right. Uh, but um, um, ladies, where are you at? I'm going to tell you why. You want a secret as to why men don't like women that talk? I'm going to let you know. I mean, I'm here to let you know. I'm here to teach. I'm, <laughs> I'm here to teach. I'm going to tell you why men grow up with this idea that women are, are like inanimate objects. Anybody want to know? I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you anyway. And this will make you realize it's going to be an epiphany when I tell you this. All right, because, you know, a lot of guys don't even realize this. All right, I'm going to tell you why It's because not only are men visual, not only are men visual, but most of our arousal for women are pictures. Mm. Like our initial introduction to women have been photos through magazine and or seeing a woman on TV or seeing a woman that we admire from far like a woman when we started admiring women and they were close to us, we really didn't look, but we always admire a woman from afar. Damn. Look at that. Mm. Now, inevitably our first admiration of women came from women being silent, not talking. And we fell in love with that woman and she didn't say a damn word. Now, most of them open their mouths and then we lose arousal or we are either kind of, damn, I didn't. So, so much of our, just our initial arousal of woman, she didn't even have to say a word. Now, women do the opposite. They like a guy, but then when he starts talking, he can win her over or lose her. Men, for the most part, we have seen women and we imagined her and we, are, we were attracted to her with her saying absolutely nothing. Not only that, ninjas could get our first couple, ninja, especially older men like myself, we could have had a whole jerk off. <laughs> Ninja, we could have went squashy on just a picture of the woman. Imagining her voice, her saying nothing. Ninja, there was a whole movie that was made and the woman was a mermaid. She didn't even talk. <laughs> she had no, she didn't even voice her. She didn't even talk. What was the movie called with Daryl Hannah? She was a mermaid. She couldn't talk. Ariel, mermaid, couldn't talk. Ninja, I'll marry you. <laughs> You'll marry the woman. I'll take her like that right there. There she is. I'll take her. That's my wife. She didn't talk. Even to the day on Instagram, videos, photos, men are aroused by a woman. She don't even have to say nothing. And it is only until she starts talking where they ruin it. I want to tell you about my degree. I want to tell you about my job. I want to tell you about I'm a boss bitch. I want to tell you about this. Then they voice start getting deeper and shit. You're just like, oh, my goodness. Oh, shut up. You're ruining it. Mm. I'm telling you right here. <laughs> that is the, yep. Yeah, I want to tell you about my opinion. I want to run this. I wear the pants in the family. 
we can just look at a woman and that's all we want. Give me that. Then she starts talking, you know what I mean? And I want you to love me for more than my body. I want you to love me for more than my face. No, man, I don't. All right. I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. <laughs> Cut that bitch off. Next caller. All right. Oh, you talking too much. What are we doing? I'm talking independent. See, I'm just telling you why. Now, don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me that I just told you this truth. I just told you the truth, and I told you why. Now, if you got asking me why after that, that's your problem. Just accept it. Just accept it. That's just the reality of it. That's exactly why. <laughs> I just told you why. I told you what. I told you why. Mm. It, it is right now. Now, if you're like, well, I don't get it. Well, I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. <laughs> Cut that bitch off. Next call. That's why. That's why. And that's why men end up losing because we think women don't have feelings. I want you to know my feelings. We like, I don't care about your feelings. We don't care about that. Just grab ankles, look pretty, speak unless spoken to. All right. Be seen, not heard. You'll win. You'll win. You can win. As a matter of fact, I'll show you right here. This is why flatbacks be winning. They know when to shut up. Sometimes they don't because they can't control the liquor. You know what I mean? But flatbacks know. Just be seen, not heard. That's why they be winning. They be like, oh, they're winning because they're, they, they're robots. They're androids. They don't have, they're not strong. Hey, be strong on your own time, baby. I just need you to look good. Just be seen, not heard. And you know your job. Know your role and shut your mouth. I'm not trying to be misogynist here, but I'm just telling you, people win like that. Just be win. I'm not happy. Oh, my God. Go be unhappy somewhere else. I don't got no time for this shit. Mm. <laughs> All right, listen, if you don't accept the truth that I just gave you, you're going to be out here. You're going to be out here still losing. I just, hey, ladies, I just gave you the truth. I just hit you with the truth. If you don't, ex listen, you can reject it and you're going to be wrong. You can accept it and put it into practice and or you can reject it and still be ignorant. But I just hit you with the undisputed truth. Okay. Anyway, mm. nobody can deny what I just said. Except the big old fat Ruben Stutter looking ninja with hot dogs on the back of his neck. He the only one that wants to hear him. All right, but I just hit you with the truth. All right, anyway. All right, anyway. No government name says the Kiki Palmer incident proves that domestic violence victims are volunteers because she had a baby with an abuser and didn't put him in jail right away. The normies paint men, especially black men, in the negative light because XXs put their energy and attention towards the small percentage of men who put their hands on them. Indeed. Yep. That's what it is. That's what it is. And I see, man, the, the women who, the, especially the sisters who hate black men, they out in full force on this story. Shout out to, uh, oh, we got a whole bunch. Troy says, good morning, coach. Have you discussed the Resurrection Project initiative in Chicago? Job fairs in Chicago exclu exclusively for migrants while a large swath of the community are unemployed, ring the bell. Indeed. He says, the community volunteered to subsidize their replacement, shaking my head. And I, yeah, we've been talking about this for a few years now. I told you that the community is done. I told you they're going to bring immigrants in to replace you. There we at. We, we're here. And Chicago is experiencing it. And what I did tell you is I said, they're tired. They're tired of the community. Just from a position of power that I would eventually hold as the great Coachellini, I want you to know, people in the community, you're going to hear it from me because they're not going to tell you. They're not going to tell you like I'm going to tell you. They're tired of you. Mm. Let me tell you. Now, they didn't have to tell me. I get the message. I can see the writing on the wall, and I've been telling you. They're tired of your shit. <laughs> They try to keep y'all in the cities in the corner of South Side Chicago, let y'all shoot each other up. They're tired of your out of wedlock pregnancies. They're tired of your bullshit. They're tired of your excuses. They're tired of your loud mouth shit. They're tired of you asking for this. They're tired of you spending 30 years on welfare. White people on it too, but you're on it largely percentage wise per capita. They're tired of you asking for shit. They're tired of your lazy ass approach. They're tired of this reparations talk. I told you this. Now you're seeing it. 
you can be mad at me. You can call me an Uncle Tom, a bootlicker, a shuffling ass Sambo, but I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to help you. They're tired of you. They're useless to them. <laughs> All right. They're letting you, they're letting you kill each other. They done tried every way to manage you. They didn't have Margaret Sanger come in with eugenics. They didn't gave black women jobs over black men, black men. They tried to incentivize the black women to stay away from y'all monkeys' asses. They sent y'all to war. They pushed crack in the neighborhoods. They gave you gang culture and hip hop. They're tired of you, ninja. You still here. <laughs> they didn't try to get you to terminate your babies. They tried everything, Ninja. They tired of you. you get, they simply like, we don't know what to do with this problem here. This is a problem. What did we do with this? They then left you in the cities for it to burn. Then they came back and bought up the land for you to just say they're gentrifying the neighborhood. They're tired of you. I only tell you the truth. I'm only going to tell you the truth. I don't care what side it reflects and if you mad or not. They can't, they're tired of you. They don't know what to do with you. They gave you a 50, 11 years to figure it out. Now, immigrants come over. And in less than 10 years, they're rich in this mother sucker. <laughs> in less than 10 years, they're self they're self sustaining. I can't even say it. In less than 10 years, they sustain their cells. Self sustaining. That's what I meant to say. And in 10 years, you have immigrants come over and they in a better position than you in two years. <laughs> they're like, bruh, the fuck is this shit? And y'all sitting over here crying. And these people come over here and take advantage of the scenario. And then you still make an excuse. I'm just telling you, I'm here for the truth. I don't care what you call me. I just tell you the truth. This is, you're not going to, they're not going to tell you this. They're just going to let you kill your babies and let your black women. You should be infuriated at your image right now. Black women, you should be infuriated. They got sexy red, icy spicy, uh, Suki Hana out here just demolishing your imagery right now, and they're letting it happen. You should be, you should be uh, protesting in the streets, but you're not. And here you go trying to figure it out. Let me figure it out for you. I got the info for you. You can rebuke it, reject it, but it ain't gonna change your situation. They're tired of you. They don't know what to do with you no more. They're just bringing in your replacements. Been saying this for years. It is. But suffering suck <laughs> Right at this point. They literally just putting y'all to the corner and waiting until y'all just die off or do whatever y'all do off. All right? <laughs> just anyway. Now, if you want to save it, save it. But it is what it is. Ninja, I, listen, I have, I have ways to repair this. But. Now they got a black man beating on a black woman and they pushing that all through the media. And he really didn't beat on her just to let you know, but that y'all can believe it what y'all want. But they're tap dancing on your grave right now. Now, if you want to go back to figure out where they messed up in the 1860s, we could have that conversation all day. It ain't going to change your reality today. Today, it don't matter what happened in 1860. They fumbled the bag. I will tell you on record, America fumbled the bag. And what to do with the population of so-called slaves that went free all of a sudden. And the reconstruction of the South and the North trying to come in. The Yankees try to help it. Jim Crow, they completely fumbled that opportunity. They didn't know what to do. But that ain't going to change the scenario, Ninja. We in trouble. It's 2020 some odd. It is what it is. They just now going, we're just going to replace you. And they're doing it, and they're funding it, right? In, right, And you voted for it. Anyway, look. It is what it is. Call me what you want, but I just told you the truth. I'm only here for the truth. I'm not here to try to figure the shit out for you. All right, anyway. Oh, by the way, you're on your own. <laughs> Sink or swim. Any ninja that wants to correct this, do not correct it as a collective. Ninja, you're on your own. Sink or swim. That's my philosophy. Ninja, save yourself. First, every black man get up out of the hood. Quickly as possible. All right. Single file line. Single file line. Ninja, we're not solving this as a collective. You need to, you need to really f solve this for yourself first. All right. Because immigrants, for the most part, that come over and win immediately, they, most of them come with not, not a penny in their pocket. Now, the new immigrants they're pushing, they're funding them. 
but save yourself, <laughs> right? Do not wait for everybody else to get their monkey ass mind right because it ain't going to happen. All right. Anyway, <laughs> that's my, all right. And if you deny what I'm saying, Ninja, anyway. All right. Shout out to actual King Smith. He says for the Mitch Ninja protection fund, we need it because they're going to be mad at me. A lot of people going to be mad at me right now. All right. Ninja's getting a passport. They're, that's a that's a way to self-protect themselves. They're protecting themselves from the bullshit. Uh, passport bros are saying, you know what? We see the writing on the wall. <laughs> and they get the hell up out of here on the airlines. Ninja frying the they fly in the friendly skies. All right, anyway. All right, anyway, what are we doing here? Chris Abney for weeding out the week yesterday. Shout out to you. He says, uh, he, he says, being strong enough to speak tough love in a world full of weak men that desperately need it. As a father of a young man, I truly appreciate it. Shout out to you. Thank you, brothers. Somebody said, even in sports, they're kind of getting, they're in the NBA, they're weeding out the American black athlete. The American black male athlete in, 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 um, in sports. They're focusing on the international. In fact, the top players in the NBA you can name them. Some of them are international players, whether they're black in skin or not. They're international. All right. Even Giannis, Giannis Antetokounmpo is not a black American. Okay. Uh, Djokovic, Joker, Jokic. He's the MVP twice. Uh, I think he won two in a row. Then he won the NBA championship. And then they gave it to Joel Embiid, who is not a FBA. <laughs> All right. Joel Embiid is not a fund, fundamental black American, right? So take it or leave it, Ninja. <laughs> Luka Doncic, you know what I mean? They're, just look at the top, some of the top five players. Wimbiana, Wimbiana, he's not a black American. See what I mean? <laughs> John Morant, where he at? Sitting at home, <laughs> right? It's what it is, Ninja. It is what it is. Yep, SGA from Oklahoma. Oklahoma. So, it, it, it's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing kind of this transition. You're seeing it right, right, right in front of your face. So um, it is what it is. You can deny it all you want. All right, where are we at? Look. Uh, shout out to No Government Name SD, and then I'm going to move on. He says, Coach, I know a couple of women that started a debate podcast. They had a photo shoot, a launch, and everything. After a few one-hour shows, they announced they were taking a break. <laughs> mm-hmm. He said... Uh, work ethic is hilarious. I appreciate yours. And he says, coach, I just saw a woman ranting that her baby dad or wait, baby dad's mom shouldn't be taking the family trip because he's behind on child support. He says that the grandmother should be giving her money to her. Their entitlement to someone else's money is cringeworthy. Facts, 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 facts. You speak in facts. Yep. Major league baseball. There's not that many black American men in Major League Baseball. I can think of Mookie Betts. It's only a handful. And if you think you've seen a ninja playing baseball, he's not black American. <laughs> he's not a black American. All right, you'll be like, there's black, men, there's black men in baseball. Where? Tell them to do an interview without a translator. All right, you're going to find out real fast, me no black poppy. Me from Venezuela, me from the Dominican, me Spanish, my nationality is. They ain't going to say they black first. Uh, but anyway, going back to the po- podcast thing, one of the things you have to understand about people in this podcast game, it is not easy. Women, I know a lot of women say, I'm going to start a podcast, and then they have to start one. And then they have to do it all the time, right? Mm. They ain't going to keep it up. They ain't going to keep it up. <laughs> all right, so you guys are getting out here, man. You better stand on your square real quick. Because they replacing you real, just little by little. <laughs> All right, where we at here? Yeah, me Cubano. All right. Está Loy bien Cubano. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, man, let me stop. All right, let me stop, man. Look, it's crazy. It's crazy, but it's a crazy world we live in. What are we doing here? Dude, we not even on Strack on Sniggle Theater. Ninja, this going to be a 10-hour show for Friday. All right, but I appreciate you for being here. Do me a favor, hit the like button. This show is off the rails, but it's the weekend, man. What do you expect? 
What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? Stragglers, nigga theater. Are you sure we didn't do it yet? Jesus. Hey. With me, if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast sticky. Come get high with me, that's a deal, right? Straggle and Stiggle Theater, we back in here. Let's take you to the first straggle. Uh, this woman right here, Generation Zooted, she has something to say out here. Let's see what she has to say, uh, right here. My cousin, who's younger than me, is getting married today. Me oh, Jesus. All right. It's on triple. Look, I can't even go through a 30 second video without going uh, chipmunk mode. Here we go. My cousin, who is younger than me, is getting married today. Meanwhile, I have credit card debt. I am in a toxic situation with one of my exes. Last week, I was so broke that instead of getting an Uber to the airport, I had a random guy from Hinge drive me. And this year, I have had chlamydia twice. So far. Oh. Happy wedding. Oh, my Lord. Oh, the yeah, well, listen, the black folk, the black culture. Listen, you have your own issues. American culture is another issue. Uh, American woman, American women, y'all down bad out here. Y'all down bad. This is how you represent yourself. <laughs> you wonder why ninjas leaving the country. She bragging about getting chlamydia twice. And getting passed over and about to hit the wall. And she got she got the dyed gray hair. Man, bruh, we in down bad out here. Oh, the humanity. My cousin, who is younger than me, is getting married today. Meanwhile, I have credit card debt. I am in a toxic situation with one of my exes. That she basically on a carousel. <laughs> all right, yep, look at the eye. She's on the carousel. All right, she got the thousand cocks there right there. She's on the carousel. She got a toxic situation, not even a relationship. Okay. That means she's on again, off again, getting choked out, all right, getting ran through, pregnant, abortion. I mean, this is crazy, bro. What are we doing? Last week, I was so broke that instead of getting an Uber to the airport, I had a random guy from Hinge drive me. So there's the carousel again, and of course, she's broke, too. Yeah. Let you get it through your thick skull that I'm broke. Dead, flat, stony, broke. I've got $3.85 in my uh, Another reason why I avoid women in this age group. I mean, they're they kind of done already. And this year I have had chlamydia twice so far. Yeah. Happy wedding. And, and she's an alcoholic drinking alcohol straight from the bottle. I mean, and you guys think not all women. She a, she an alcoholic on hinge, chlamydia twice, fornicating, broke, passed up, hitting the wall. I mean, how much more can you expect? Pack light. Baggage lady. Watch out. Straggle and Sniggle Theater goes on here. We do have another uh we have another woman here that's gonna talk about what I kind of talked about earlier about uh women women's voices. This uh picture says LOL. The voice isn't exactly um feminine. All right, let's take it from there. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. You ready for this? Most women pitch their voices up for the comfort of men because y'all want us to look and sound like children. We literally move our voices up, I don't know, a half octave to protect your egos. How embarrassing for you. I, on the other hand, enjoy making men incredibly uncomfortable. So I'm going to take my five octave range and I'm going to live down here because it spooks you a little bit. Now bark for me like a good boy. Send it. I mean, again, I mean, listen, this is what kevin samuels fit feminine and friendly they just refuse and then one of the reasons why they refuse is because they hate men they're full misandrists misandry is running wild they just despise men and i wish more women would admit it okay listen i don't hate women they just these women despise men there's a lot of man haters out here there's a lot of women that have been much of it comes from their uh being hurt heartbroken by running getting ran through by drug dealers from 13 all the way to 15 16 and whatnot all right but then they get here, damage themselves. They turn it. They got gauges in their ears, tattoos, and then they become masculine. And then nobody likes them no more. They feel rejected. Then they start to hate men. And then they they get to this point. Then we react to them, and we're the misogynist. It's it's just a vicious circle here in America. And you cannot. I don't know why people can't figure out why American women be out here stay losing out here. They stay losing. That's what I thought. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. You ready for this? Most women pitch their voices up for the comfort of men because y'all want us to look and sound like children. Now, I already broke down why men have a certain opinion of women, but 
It always is going to be some metaphile stuff with them. You want us to look and sound like children. See, it always is a metaphile thing. Now, everybody, everybody code switches. Men code switch. Hi, darling. How you doing, baby? How you doing? Oh, baby, you know what I'm saying? How you doing, sweetheart? But that's the same thing. But she's making it about herself. Most men bring their bass down and their voice just slightly, especially when they're in close quarters or trying to relax the woman. Hey, baby, how you doing? Ooh. Ah, ooh, ooh, ah. All right. So she made it about herself. You want us to sound like children and look like a metaphile. All right. This is crazy. We literally move our voices up. I don't know, a half octave to protect your egos. Yeah. Now it's got to be about protecting egos. I mean, our egos are so fragile. Did you play your role? Why don't nobody know they roll no more? <laughs> All right. Nobody knows their role. The Yeah. Estoy loco. Nobody knows their role. Just play your role. Everybody has to play a role here. Sometimes you got to fake it to make it. Sometimes you got to, you know what I mean, to be like, yeah, you know. Sometimes you got to sound super intelligent. You know what I mean? Esophagus. <laughs> All right, self-sustaining. Sometimes you got to play a role. And then just play your role until you get where you need to get. What's, hard? What's so hard with that? <laughs> What's so hard with that? I'm going to be myself and be out here losing. Mm. They can't accept me for who I am with my gauges and nose ring and bull nose ring and tattoos. Yeah, nobody likes that. <laughs> All right. Nobody likes that. All right. So anyway, next one right here. Straggle with Sniggle Theater. Let's play the clip. This says right here, uh, a woman uh, It says, when you just want some alone time. Hey, babe, I'm going out. All right. I said I'm going out. Okay, have fun. You know, I just find it funny how you all, like, have fun. You're not even asking me to stay. You're not asking who's coming. You're not even asking to come with me. Who you got coming over? Nobody. I'm just trying to watch the game. All right, babe. Well, I'm going to watch the game with you. Because you think you slick. Okay. You acting real funny, and you moving real suspicious. So, guess what? Matter of fact, I'm going to leave. All right. You all, like, all right, and you still not asking me to stay. Wow. Matter of fact, get ready. And now I'm going to wait till you get ready. Because you think I'm really dumb. You think I'm stupid. And you over here acting real casual. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you know, sometimes. Now I got to cut you. Yeah, that's what happens when you, you know, Puerto Rican chick, man. They got, they look good, but. Now I got to cut you. You know what I mean? Sometimes you can see why he wants some alone time out here, you know. She's looking very stragged out. But, you know, men can't be just with you all the time. You want to go out, go out, baby. Hey, I'm confident. I'm confident in my masculinity. You can't find nobody better than me. Ay, ay, ay. And then, no, I'm going to be out here. I'm going to mess your day up. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man, sometimes, man, these relationship people, I know this is a skit, but a lot of people be like this. And this ninja's like, man, this is crazy. He looking like, he looking like, oh, the humanity. Oh, the humanity. All right, somebody said, hey. This is how they be, man. This is how they be. And this is how strags and baddies be. This is why I have a no strag pa po policy. I'm calling it, She has the strag uniform on, but uh, sometimes relationships aren't worth it. <laughs> if you got to put up with that. Oh, and you're paying for it. Hey, I got an update. Is this an update? Well, I, yeah, I'll do the update on Kiki Palmer's situation and I'll get to the rest of it. Well, I still got to do my outro here. Hold on. Hey. With me, if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast sticky. Come get high with me, that's a deal, right? Update on the Kiki Palmer situation, then I'll catch up on the super chats. Kiki Palmer, I did an episode um last night, um, as it was dropped that the, she filed a restraining order on Darius Jackson. He got hit with the okie. Uh, well, Darius, I think his name is Darius Jackson, all right, but he got hit with the okie doke. He basically was set up prime to get full custody of his son when Kiki Palmer was out here acting a fool. And then she set him with, up with the okie doke, already reviewed it. She went back, and then they got back together. She, buy it, she bought her time, and then she got herself in a situation where she can get leverage and full custody. So if you want to see that part of the breakdown, I already broke that down last night. Today, images have surfaced of Kiki Palmer... She did say, she did say that she has footage of her being beat up, all right? And I'm assuming that is some sort of camera footage, and I'm going to have to say viewer discretion is advised because, listen, what I don't do is promote any type of violence, domestic violation, arguing with women, 
or any of those things. And any man doing this, use weak. Use weak. But not only are you weak, you're dumb. You big dummy. There's no need to do any of this stuff. Now, it seems like this guy, Darius Jackson, you know what I mean? The elevator don't go all the way to the top floor. And judging by these pictures, and he probably was dealing with strag behavior, he responded in not the right way. So we're going to show you pictures of the alleged domestic violence that Kiki Palmer is pushing out there. You have to understand that these are images, blurry images of what is perceived to be Darius Jackson beating the brakes off of Kiki Palmer. Now, I, do, again, do not promote even arguing with women, putting up with any of these behaviors. All right, dealing with strags is going to put you in this type of situation. This is why I have a no strag policy. I have a no argument with women policy. Soon as she starts arguing, I start to get to stepping. All right, I'm like, we ain't going to do this. So image number one, you can see she got her booty shorts on or panties. You can see this right there, so they blurred it out. Now, this image does look like he beating the shit out of her, just to let you know. I don't see the video. I only see these images, and these images, paused here, looks like he's dragging her over the sofa. Now, what he's probably doing, and there, are, there she is there getting flipped over the sofa, and it looks like, you can't tell, but it looks like he's moving away from her and now she's jumping back over the sofa with her peace leave out. You see that right there? And there it is here. He's running out of the door, and then her booty's out. Now, I want to tell you, she says, she says that they were fighting over a phone, even in the uh, domestic violence um, um, claim, and that I think he ran out in the street with her keys and her phone. Remember, she says, he threw my keys out, preventing me from leave. He grabbed... That looks like a fight over phone. I mean, anybody can see that, that that's what it is. I don't see him beating her up. Now, he is getting physical with her, but I'm going to show you again. And I'm not saying that this is not domestic violence, but this is definitely a fight over a phone. You can clearly see that that's what they're doing. He doesn't look like he's choking her here. But dumb ninjas, all right, here's another one right here. Dumb ninjas do what dumb ninjas do. All right, when you deal with strags, this is the type of stuff you're dealing with. And by the way, she knows full and damn well what's going on here that they're being recorded. He knows he's being recorded. But, you know, you men are too dumb to realize that they set your ass up for the okie doke. She's fighting over the phone for some reason. She's going to get caught. He's getting emotional like a dumb ninja does. All right, and he's going to fight her for a phone. You stupid. You stupid. You big dummy. And he gets what he deserves. You're going to get what you deserve. Okay, now, do I think he abused or did? I, I don't think this. I think that both of them, as we know with domestic violence, 70% of it is instigated by the perceived victim. She is not going to be, she cannot say she hasn't participated in this. But when you're dealing with women because you like the booty or any of these things and you're loyal and faithful to, you, this is what you get. And so it looks like he has the phone, right? And so this ninja's going down in flames. He lost all of his leverage by dumb, he stupidly going back to her. When he could have got full custody, he would have had, had the leverage in full custody. So it looks like he's running away with the phone. Uh, this does look like he's running away after tossing her over the sofa. But obviously we don't have the video, so we can't tell. Next image is an image that looks like he's dragging her either up or down the stairs. They're shirtless. I don't know why dumb ninjas do this. You guys are stupid. You big dummy. Stupid. You, there's no reason to put your hands on a woman. I mean, well, there is, but there's no reason for a smart ninja to ever engage this far with a woman like this. We already know what her behavior is. She's already demonstrated what her behaviors are. She's a strag. She's a famous straggle daggle. All right, that's all she is. She don't have no different uh, operating system than uh, any of these broke bitches y'all dealing with. All right, but it looks like he's either dragging her up the stairs or down or possibly choking her with a rear naked choke. But the funny thing is, I'm looking at this and it says 2022. It says 2022. 
22 at 6 30 a.m now i'm gonna assume that the date is wrong on this video or either the time but who got time at 6 30 a.m to put somebody in the rear naked choke <laughs> right something's going on here i need an understanding because 2022 was a long time ago to be coming up with current claims. Her most recent claim is from November 5th, and I think that's the cell phone incident. But the next picture is from 2022. That was before the Usher incident. That was before the birth of the child, if I'm not mistaken. The child wasn't even born yet, and she still stayed. When the Usher incident happened, where were these abuse claims at? This is what I'm asking you. There, when the Usher incident happened, that could have been her chance to say, yes, this guy is controlling and abusive. She did not. So it gives me pause to figure out what's going on here. Then they reconciled. Only for her to really be finessing the guy, but he was too dumb to see it. He was dumb. Then she went back to him. Where was the claim then? None. Then we waited to November 5th, and now we have the tussle over the phone that looks like he's choking her. All right, so it looks like it looks bad for him. This, the, there's the image right there. That looks really bad right there, but that is a fight over a phone. I mean, it's clear. It's evident. Either way, it is domestic violence. Either way, he lost leverage. Either, either way, he got played like a fool. Either way, he fell for the okie doke. He's going to lose custody of this kid. He's going to go to 52 weeks of domestic battery and anger management. Uh, and she played him for a fool. When I tell you guys, when I tell you guys, don't argue with women. When I tell you stop dealing with skeezers and strags, you guys won't listen to me. But coach, she thick. When I tell you to leave the community, you don't do it. When I tell you all of these things, don't argue with women, don't help them, wash your hands, you guys think I'm crazy. You guys think I'm crazy. But this is obviously what you get set up for. You argue with them, you trying to make it work. If you're in a relationship and you got to get to the point where you got to wrestle a phone from a woman and then try to abuse her, and, Ninja, you lost. You lost. You're never going to win that battle. Even if you get the phone from her hands, <laughs> you're never going to win because to get a phone from a woman's hands, you're going to probably get some scrapes and all of this stuff. Then you got an abuse claim. You got a, you got a clear case of abuse. If she gets a scratch, a bruise, women bruise easily. Sometimes you could break a wrist or a finger trying to get the, you know, women are not built very strong. You could break a finger trying to pry you know, like uh, Jonathan Majors allegedly broke that woman's finger. You could break a woman's finger trying to pry a phone from, a, from the hands. But see, you're trying to get evidence and win your case and prove that she's a cheater. Well, she was already a cheater. It was pretty evident. And you better get a DNA test on that baby. But you guys have to know how to win this game. Winning this game in a physical confrontation, intimidation, trying to prove something that can easily be provable by you walking away. You don't realize that that's not the way to do it. Keeping your woman in check and trying to keep your girl and not letting Usher get your girl, you are you guys are idiots. She set him up for this trap. I want to love to see the full video, meaning the full video of how the incident started from start to finish for me to give the honest opinion. And I wish everybody else would do the same. Unfortunately, he's not going to give that much leeway, right? He has clear evidence that he has toxic behavior. He's physically, he's physically abusive. He probably yells and screams like an emotional ninja. And he has a propensity to try to think that if he can live up under a woman, he's winning. Straight up loser. You big dummy. Straight up loser. And you got played like a fool. And ninja, I cannot defend you. <laughs> I cannot defend this type of behavior. Anyway, let me get to these super chats. Ninjas, you guys start stop being losers. Unreal. Anyway, let's get to these super chats. Thank you for contributing to today's show. Hit the like button. 
And uh, we got a lot here, so I got to get through. Soldier for God says, uh, my dad raised me to retire a year before him. Thanks, dad. Shout out to all the strong dads out here. OTOBO, please go uh, to Insider and read the article who said, um, a woman said in the article, I had over 25 jobs and consider myself careless and flaky. I was fully diagnosed with ADHD. Coach, please share it with your audience. Shout out to her. 25 yobs, huh? Careless and flaky. The regular dude, I think we as dumb as North Korea and how they do their people. I'm starting to question if we are really have freedom. I've been challenging you on that. I've been challenging. We have the illusion of freedom. We're not as free as we think. We're not as free as we think, and I've been challenging people to really look at themselves. And even when you get into corporate jobs, when you look at how we move and operate in the Industrial Revolution, Rockefellers, the design of the 40-hour week, work week, you, you work your strong part of your day, and then you're fatigued, you, the loss of your family, predictive programming, they funnel you into certain career paths. I mean, it's really the illusion of freedom. Now, we do have freedom to an extent. We have more freedom than a lot of people can afford, but we're really not. And one other thing, people choose to not be free. People choose to be slaves. They choose to be directed. They cannot, they cannot make their own decisions. People go to jobs and they get told what to do all the time. I mean, like they cannot make a move without being told what to do. So there isn't very, very much freedom for a lot of people because for a lot of reasons, but we're not as free as we think. And I've been challenging people that a long time. And, and people give up their freedom and rights all the time. All the time. I mean, we'll do it. We'll vote for it. We'll do it in the exchange for safety. Oh, I want to be safe. Let's give up freedom. Let's give up rights. Oh, yes. Yeah, but we're safe. And so, you know. And the more people who are ignorant of this, the more likely we're just going to fall into this giving up freedom. Yep. Debt servitude, we choose. We choose these things. Marriage. <laughs> Marriage. We ask to be locked up in cages. Albert Wesker, El Salvador president, might get the NWO skinny pop, pop, pop in a boom, boom, brr, boom. Shout out to the ladies. Ladies love Cool C, former sea hag. Earl Thomas, ex-wife, helped her new boyfriend steal $1.9 million from his identity. <laughs> Sad. Strife XL. Says coach, I love your show as always. However, can you please make a soundbite of Nia Long when she says she loves drug dealers? Indeed, I'll try to work over that on the weekend. What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend? Strident Hermit with respect to KS. I think it's weak that flowers are given to a person whose whose notes came from brilliant minds such as yourself in the second generation after MRAs. I know we don't want to really take the shine away because ninjas gonna call me haters. But, of course, there were people that preceded all of us with the message, and we honor them. All right, JBW says, had today off from my job in Cali for Veteran Days, Veteran, Veterans Day weekend. And it says, shout out to all my fellow vets, and happy birthdays to the Marines. Shout out to you, and thank you for your service. Stephen Russell, you should make a short about the black women's or black Americans replacement, Stone Cold Gold, shout out here, man. Shout out to you. Well, if I do, man, the pro black's going to be at my neck. The pro black's going to be at our neck if I do that. And I try not to piss off the pro black because they're desperate. Never piss off a desperate segment of people. They're desperate. They're in desperation and they have no answers. So if I put a short out about that, then they all just call, call, call me names. Right? And say, what's your solution? Did you be a replace? Teron McAdams says she had better prep. She had better prep time than Batman. Facts. Mm. Kiki Palmer had lead time to finesse this ninja. Paul K says, walk away and go to work. If your girlfriend or your wife or your, your live-in starts tripping, your best power is to walk away. Best power. Walk away from that woman. But ninjas will always want to, there's a lot of wannabe pimp ninjas out here. That think if you just Ike turn it a bitch, look at her like. Like they always want to get a strag, straggle mindset woman in line. Like they pride themselves about getting women in line. Now, I'm going to just tell you something right here. You're a weak man. Let me just say this. 
People ain't gonna agree with me because then we do. We got a lot of wannabe pimps. People that look up the pimps. Pimps are low lifes. They sound cool and they make me laugh and sniggle. They funny as hell, but they're low lifes. I had a family member that was a legit. 100% pimp. All right. But they're low lives. I don't, I don't see why you would look up to a person like this. That's number one. Number, and number two, you will want to be perpetrating ass pimp. You ain't never pimp nothing. All right. So you ain't never going to pimp nothing out here. So I don't know why you're looking up the pimps. That's number two. Number three, they got to mess with broken chicks. Every uh, pickup artist, Mac and Pimp, tells you, that they have to only deal with broken women. You have to deal with a broken person to pimp her. <laughs> right? So, right? You have to be deal with an absolute low bottom of the barrel, crawling, belly crawling beneath woman to pimp her. If you dealing with any woman that's not a belly crawling leech, okay, then you don't even have to do all of these things that these pimps talk about. <laughs> right? You don't have to do with it. You're dealing with low-quality individuals, broken women. So just know that if I hear you say anything pimping, you're dealing with broke-ass women, and then that makes you weak to begin with. So when you do this, and you say, this is how I keep a woman in line, I got to break a bitch. (laughs) I got to break the bitch. She already broken, but you got to break her in. Then you want to keep her in check and brag about it. I'm like, dude, she broke it already. Didn't you just, <laughs> you, she already broken. Then you break her and then you act like you doing something just to do what? Keep a broken woman around you and every day you got to break her. I mean, this is crazy. Eventually, this is going to be your demise. The strongest quality of a man is to be able to walk away. That is the strongest. Because you think fighting a woman, fighting another man makes you the strongest. Sometimes one of the smartest things you can do is know your enemy and know when to evade. You don't have to take everybody direct on. You don't have to take everybody head up. Even then just like, I got these hands. Sometimes you don't have to even throw the hands and you win. If your enemy is, if your enemy is weak. If your enemy is strong, read the, read, read the art of war. But men who say that everything they have to do, they have to take head on physically, go knuckle up, knuck till you buck, put your chin up and your chest out, you're going to realize that that's not where your power is. Your power is to be able to survive in advance. All right? Walk away is your best power. All right? That's your biggest power out here. Sun Tzu, the art of war. It's, it's what it is. But guys want to break bitches and keep bitches in line and be over her and monitoring her and stuff like this. I got the bitch in line. Like that, that, that comes from weakness. That doesn't come from strength. It sounds like it comes from strength. It sounds cool. But I don't micromanage any woman. All right. I refuse to micromanage a woman. And if you got to micromanage a woman and, and, and reign over her, and you can't walk away when she act up, all right? And you don't got a woman who knows what to do and get in your, okay, I see what you do and follow your lead. Follow your lead. Not reign over her. Reigning over her is weakness. All right, but anyway, ninjas will never understand this. And this is why, and if you ever, if you ever debate me, ninja, I want you to go walk outside and look at your grass. And if you got patches of, <laughs> let me stop. I want you to go outside and walk on the corner. If your corner store has an apartment above the corner store, Ninja, that should tell you where you at in life. You should walk to your corner and see the community mailbox. You should walk to your corner and see somebody building a house. You should walk to your corner and see a park that has plush, new new park, new grass, right? They got new equipment. If you are debating me and you walk to your corner and you see a corner store that says liquor all night and an apartment building on top of it, Ninja, you are losing this argument. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anyway, let me stop. All right, anyway, let me do it. Let me stop. Let me stop, man. I love my people. <laughs>
All right, anyway, let me stop. All right, anyway, if you walk to your corner and there's a, a tavern and they playing 1970s Isaac Hayes music, talking about, I'm your mama, I'm your daddy, I'm that ninja in the alley. And old women coming out dressed like skeezers coming out, your granny coming out with a wig, ninja, you losing this argument already. <laughs> All right, let me stop. I love y'all, man. Yep, they got a church next to the liquor store. If that's what you see on your corner, the 1st and 15th Avenue Tabernacle Church of God in Christ. And there's a pastor with a Cadillac and a perm. And there's holes on that corner. You're losing this argument. You cannot, you cannot debate me on this. I said Isaac Hayes. I mean Curtis Mayfield. Sorry. Thank you, babe. Thank you, brothers. I mean Curtis Mayfield. Why did I say Isaac Hayes? Anyway. All right, look. Willie Cameron, shout out to you. Blue Bagger says the only way to win is to not play the game. <laughs> Indeed. Schedule P, my ex-wife said she's selling her house and gives me the profits if she can move back with me. Oh, your ex-wife? Mm. Nah. She said she wants to work part-time and take care of the kids don't do it nope don't do it <laughs> all right let me get back to the show i'm gonna get back to the show i appreciate y'all man look what are we talking about next are men juice utilities men are you just utilities out here uh let's take you to this one okay are men juice utilities all right check out check out this tweet tweet went viral tweet tweet went viral i should put up a poll for this one i want to see what you think about this And this is allegedly a woman that says, my dad pays my mom's mortgage, my grandma's rent, and my car note, and half of my niece's rent every month. Okay. Your rent's due, motherfucker. I ain't trying to hear nothing about a man who has to say 50-50. Sorry. All right. I'm kind of paraphrasing it. This was November 9th yesterday. 1.2 million views. 16,000 likes. A bunch of people saved it. 3,000 retweets. I'll repeat it. It says, my dad pays my mom's mortgage. Now, I got to understand, why is it the mom's mortgage? Maybe they're divorced, but the dad pays the mom's mortgage. Okay, I don't know. Maybe if they're married, I don't, is it their, their mortgage? Okay, let's continue. My dad pays my mom's mortgage, my grandma's rent, and my car note, and half of my niece's rent every month. I ain't trying to hear nothing a man has to say about 50-50 sorry. Now, here's the thing. Here's, here's, here's the thing on this. First of all, I tried to warn you men. I tried to warn you men that if you have female relatives, they're going to be dependent dependapotamuses. You had a mother, and when she gets old, 70, 75, 80, you're going to have to support her. You're going to have to support her. All right, she was strong and independent to an extent. You're going to have to support her, or you're going to have to let her be out here homeless. Okay. If you have a daughter, you have a daughter, you ninjas that want legacies, you're going to be supporting your female, uh, your female child into infinity and beyond. Even if she gets married, you're going to have to do some sort of uh, support, right? You're going to have to do so. So so child support doesn't end at 18. It doesn't end at 18, especially with these gen zooted ass kids. They're going to be around for a long time, especially then if they see you supporting They're going to not even do anything. And you do have a lot of these women running around here saying that they're independent. And I always tell you, if they're under 30, they might have a father or a sugar zaddy or a zaddy. Some man is supporting them, a boss, right? They're never independent, government zaddy. So there's a lot of 25-year-old women talking shit out here about you broke-ass ninjas, but their father is still paying the bills, especially when you talk about suburban families. You find you a suburban Kaylee, and she's under 20, 25, 30, and and she comes from a good family, her dad is paying her rent. Even if she has a good job, dad is coming through. Now, now you see the other part of it that kind of gets egregious. The niece, wait, the niece pays my, half of my niece's rent. Half of my niece's rent every month. So there's another strong and independent woman. This ninja, this ninja is covering that. And we talked about that scenario. Even in the black community, you will find that a lot of uncles, 
a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of family members who make it. A lot of uncles that have nieces that are through marriage and not blood nieces. They be simping after they nieces. All right. We actually showed you video of that happening and we broke that down. If the niece is an adult and the niece is kind of sexy and come around, hi, unk. And the unk is not bloodline. The unk is not 50. The unk is like 35. All right. Maybe 40. And the niece come around. She 20, 25. And she come around here and unk is like, shit, that ain't none of my blood. That ain't none of my family. Uncle be simping for the niece. Yeah. Uncle, uncle do this. And then just call this tricking and shit like this. So you have this scenario being built up. Now, people are going to say it's fake. I'm just going to tell you, most women are not self-sufficient. If, in fact, a man is able to be stable, these women will be parasites to that guy. And that will prevent them from moving on. That will prevent them from being self-sufficient. Women will find a person and lean on them financially. They will never be like, hey, thanks for helping. I got ahead. I don't need your help anymore. This is the truth about how women operate. They never be like, I'm going to never need you again, <laughs> right? Men, on the other hand, get a sense of, I feel bad asking you for something. So if I do need help, it's temporarily. Most stand-up men. There are a lot of punk-ass men out here that live under women, live under their parents, and they really never get going. All right, and so they just settle and they become content. Well, I'll just sleep on the sofa for eight years. There are some guys out there like that. I don't push that. I think you're weak when you do that. And yes, we're calling a lot of people weak. All right, and them ninjas be talking about they got the mouthpiece too. All right, don't even have a, their own chest of drawers out here. Ninja, stop. All right, ninja, you don't have a chest of drawers. Stop. <laughs> ninja, you got baskets for your, for your underwear. Man, I don't want to hear you, ninja. Ninja, get you a solid piece of wood, a uh, chest of drawers, Ninja, where you pull out and you can put, separate your socks from your drawers. Ninja, you got baskets from Ikea where you put your drawers, Ninja. And you're going to come up to my show and try to challenge me. But anyway, enough about you, Ninjas. I'll be on y'all Ninjas neck. All right. <laughs> anyway, DJ Collett has said something similar. So listen what? to DJ Collett, and I'm going to put up a poll. I'm going to put up a poll. DJ Collett says he pays all of his family's bills, including his parents' bills. Now, this is where I'm going to find out. Are men just utilities? Okay. Are we just utilities? If we make it, if we make it, do we need to pay everybody's bills? All right, here we go right here. Let's play the video. Uh, the car and then get a strip mall and go to the big mall yep. and they're making some real money. And get it and all taken away. Get it all taken away. That shaped you because I read where you personally pay everything. I, pay I don't know how to handle nothing. I pay everything, and I and that's the biggest blessing. You, anybody that's watching this, take care of your mother and father. Take care of them. Even if they don't need to be taken care of them, take care of them. You, you, you pay all their bills. You work for your family. You have kids, you work for your kids. You have a wife, you work for your wife. That's the number one thing you got to do. My mom and dad, like right now, my mom texted me right now. I think, uh, she went to go to um, Tallahassee and they could have drove. I'm like, no, I'm gonna send you a car service so you and dad don't have to drive. Enjoy the ride. You don't need to drive by yourself. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like little thing, oh, I love the simple, boom, boom. Yo, uh, uh, my mom would go, yo, whatever you need. Um, I bought him a beautiful house. That was the best feeling in the world. I remember buying my dad a car and I remember them buying me a car. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know how that, that, that's, and I got kids, you know what I'm saying? And I tell my kids, everything I, is for you, but I teach them, the same way my, my mom and dad taught me hard work and they made sure they took me to work so I could see that. But they also showed me 100% love while there was work. Yeah. All right. Let me pause the video right now because I just put up a poll here and I want you to understand when we talk about pay all your family's bills, we're talking about extended family. We're talking about mom, dad, when they get older or, 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 or um, nieces and daughters and ex-wives and baby mamas is this the role of men because a lot of people will say yes I, and listen there's no wrong answer here there's no wrong answer i just want you to answer the question all right there's no wrong answer we're just asking our men utilities right there's a lot of men that find pride in this there's a lot of men that say hell no jay-z says hell no he had a person he had a relative recently come out and uh he wouldn't give them i don't know it was in the neighborhood of ten thousand dollars right 
And the $10,000 to a billionaire is inconsequential. It would be like less than $5 for me, maybe even less. Nickels, pennies to us compared to what, to what he was. And then he said, no, cut them off. We also have a lot of NBA players that the first thing they do is buy their woman, their mom a house. And I actually have some NBA players, Gibble Arenas and Kenya, Kenya Martin, basically saying this is why black and white families do different in the NBA. It's because in the NBA, once a kid makes it, they then go to their family members and then buy their mother a house and buy their mother a car. As opposed to white players that come into the league, the European players, they never have that plight. All right, and they never take on that role of responsibility. Sometimes when you become successful, there's guilt. You win a lottery, there's guilt. You work hard, you have survivor's guilt. There's such thing called survivor's guilt where you're like, hey, I survived, and then because of these people, I made it. And really, it's not. And so they're saying, we made it. All right, you made it because of us, so therefore, you support us. But then uh, uh, Tyreek Hill has moved plenty of his family members on his property in Florida where other people are like, my kids ain't getting a dime. I'm not going to support you. I'm not going to give you handouts because then you won't become who you need to become. There's people that say when they die, they're leaving their kids a small portion of their fortune, not everything. And they're going to donate the rest to the pledging fund. New, 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 new world order. All right. Yeah. Playing the black taxes. Like, what do you think here? Survivors remorse, survivors guilt, right? And then people start saying, oh, you made it. So now you owe us. There's when there's. There's parents that sued their kids who made it to the NFL saying, hey, I raised you and you owe me a million dollars. I showed you stories of this. Okay. There's men that deal with women and then the women say, hey, I'm in a bind and it's always you fixing a bind. We, we believe in the bind fixers LLC, right? Fixes by LLC. But there's a limit to it because once you continue to do it, I, I, I agree with you got to cut them off, right? Deal with them a couple times, cut them off. All right, but ninjas be supporting the buying, fixing the buyings all their lives. And every time they do it, they realize that this person becomes dependent. Your daughters become dependent on you when you continue to do this. Do you just push them out and say, hey, man, spread your wings and fly away? Now, I'm a little bit hardcore. I'm a little bit hardcore. Me, the way I do this shit is that I teach yo ass to fish. Yeah, Jackie Chan left nothing to his kids. Jackie Chan kicked his daughter out and said, you going you can be a liberal reading rainbow with your lesbian girlfriend, but you're done as far as I'm you, I'm gonna cut your ass off. Right? Cut your ass off. Right. And so a lot of people are like, nah, man, you gotta fight. You gotta get. In my opinion, it is better for me to teach you and give you opportunities and teach you how to fish than it is for me to give you the results of me fishing. I will put you in position to win. And if you don't take that position, if you don't take advantage, if you don't take advantage of the situation I gave you, and I will give you situation, you lost hell with you. Dr. Dre cut his daughter off at age 31. And the daughter then proceeded to, prior to cut, getting cut off, she proceeded to throw him under the bus publicly. He cut her off, and then she ran out there. He, he cut me off at age 31, and now she had to be an Uber driver. Now, there's some people who also believe, hey, family's everything. So we all live together, and you know, my daughter lives with me until marriage, and my daughter will be protected in all costs, and, and my son, right? In my opinion, there's a fine line with this paying your family's bills. There is a fine line with this philosophy. Because I think what people are going to get, you're going to get abused. You're going to get abused in this scenario. And yes, we're a utility. And yes, we made it. All right. But the frail shit. <laughs> Because when my coke come in, we got to use the scales that they playing the whales with or weigh the whales with. Hey, ninja, hey, I'm just saying, we made it. We made it. We dodged a bullet. But at some particular point, you got to fly. And I believe it is you got to actually give people opportunities. Create something around them that they can use. And what you will find is once you do that, guess what they'll do? They will not 
take advantage of the opportunity because it is much easier to just ask for the handout. It is much easier to guilt you. What are you going to do? Throw your mother in the street? What are you going to do? Make your kids be out here homeless selling pussy? Well, because <laughs> you'll do this. You'll say, I'll give you a job. I'll, I'll start a business. I'll invest in a business. <laughs> Shout out to JD because I, I messed up the lyric at the end. But um, that was impromptu. But I want you, I want to support you, but I want you to put in some elbow grease. I just cannot pay your bills. I just cannot pay your bills. I think I can develop a support system around you. I can give you an opportunity, but then what you'll do is I'll give you the support system and they'll fuck it up. They'll say, I couldn't do it. I couldn't make it. It was hard. We going to make it. And they'll, they'll fumble it. They won't work as hard for you. They'll come in late. They'll leave early. And you're like, hey, uh, this is your support. Give them a job. If they have a business idea, make them write out three business plans, a marketing plan. Hey, man, give me $10,000, man. I'm going to start a barbershop that has a car wash in the back. <laughs> All right. Here, just give me the 10000 And then you realize they smoke it up. They buy a couple of pieces of weed. They, they fornicate, buy some hoes, and they be back broke. They're going to fumble it. So I believe here there's a fine line to this. Even with your children, even with your adult children, I think there's a fine line to this. Parents who are elderly, okay, okay, they, they sacrifice for you. There's an extent to my help. I'm, you're definitely not moving in my house because I'm going to have orgies with junior college girls every weekend. All right, I'm going to just let you know. Mama, daddy, you're not going to want to see the debaucherous lifestyle of your son. Your son is a, heath, a heathen out here. And you're going to wonder why all these girls from the college dorm are over here this weekend. That's where my money goes. That's where I blow my money. <laughs> right? So when that, cause it, it, cause if my mama moved in, she was going to be like, damn, why don't you just give that money to me? I'm going to say like, honey, I'm a heathen out here and I lead a hedonist lifestyle. You're not going to want to witness the life that I live. Mm. So you can't live in this house. It's going to be orgies and train gangs, and it's going to smell like Badussi cigars and cheap liquor. Train <laughs> Every single weekend, all right? You gonna What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? And I don't want you to think less of me, mama. I don't want you to think less of me in your 70s and your 80s looking at your son out here with all these flatback Supremes. I'm going to tell you what it's going to look like every weekend out in this mug. My mom, mama going to be like, what you doing with all these flatbacks in here? I'm going to be like, mama, I'm going to have to throw you from the train if you don't listen. <laughs> right? Throw mama from the train. Train. All right, let me live my life. <laughs> mm. All right. Shit. So you're going to have to go to the nursing home. I'll pay a half of it. And you use your 401k, Miss Strong and Independent. I'm going to have to put a blindfold on you, mama, out here. Trying. Go to your room, mama. Daddy, don't come out either. You can't get in this. Trying. <laughs> All right, anyway, I'm just being honest. This is where my money goes. <laughs> this is it's crazy. All right, uh, the poll says right here. The poll says right here we have two polls up, and then we'll get to some alternative super chats, and then I think we're on to the main event already. Yeah, we're on the main, to, on the main event. <laughs> Sit in your room and don't come out, right? When you hear something clapping, I'm not watching the football game. <laughs> Mama going to be like, what's all that clapping out here? She coming out scratching her titty, all right? I hear a lot of clapping out here. You watching the game, Sean? Mm. No, I ain't watching no game. She going to hear. You watching church? All right, Frederick Casey Price on. You watching church? Who, who clapping all out here? <laughs> all right, let me stop. She going to walk out? <sighs> all right, let me stop. Mm. It smell like Padushi out here. All right, let me stop. Here we go right here. Should a man pay all of their family's bills? We got 90%. I'm sorry, 82%. People say no. 18% have survivor's guilt. 
All right, eighteen percent have survivor's guilt. All right, uh, eighteen percent of people say, "Hey, I'm responsible." Uh, my family made me put me in a position right here. Shout out to the other channel, the Notorious Channel. Eighty percent say no. I think in the scenario that they describe, this woman right here, let's put her up, man. This scenario is a no for me. This is no. I don't care how much money I got. I'm not paying for my ex-wife's mortgage. That I think that's what she's saying. My dad pays my mom's mortgage. Never. That ain't never going to happen. So that's automatically a no. Okay? That's automatically a no. He says, uh, my grandmother's rent. I mean, that's sus already. Ninja, where's your 401k at, mama? Where your pension at when you worked at the at the uh, corporate office in the 1970s and 80s. Where your pension at? And her car note, the daughter's car note, and the niece's rent? Oh, hell no. Mm. Nope. <laughs> it's, that's not happening. Let me get to these alternatives, and then we're heading on to the main event. Do me a favor, hit the like button. And I swear my heater is on. There's not the air is not blowing. I think it's the heat. All right, what do we got here? Xavion says there's a... Uh, they're intentionally exasperating the mental health crisis in America and creating a whole new mass of school deleters. The common denominator of people committing atrocities in society are those on mental health meds. And I'm noticing that every time there's a scenario and it includes a non-melanated person, they immediately go to mental health. Oh, they've had mental health. No, they say mental illness. Oh, well, they were mentally ill, which I'm sure they were, but MK Ultra in this mode. New, 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 new world order. All right, anyway. All right, who is this in the building here? Mr. Kendall. Kendall Young? Hey, coach. There was a post that complained about devices like, I can't say them, but the devices that have AI that you buy, it's buy for like $39 listening devices. And he says, they're all women. So I complained that the devices like these devices are all women. We are about to go to WW3 and people are complaining about gender bias and AI technology. Take me out with the buzzer. Mm. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I just think we're too comfortable. We're, we live too good. We live too good. We live too good. We, we live too good. That's why we are dealing with the situation we're in. Right, we got too many options. We got too. We have too much access to stuff. We're bored. We're bored. Shout out to no government name says. What's your advice for raising Gen Z boys and protecting them from the blue pill, mental health, and emasculating culture? Also, can you do a show on this topic? Shout out to you. Yes, indeed. Quick answer. Quick answer. I'm red. And uh, my son, I, I, my son says something with me is somewhat private, but let me just tell you, he has a great ima- admiration for myself. He looks at, he looks up to me. He expressed this. I won't tell you what he said, but he expressed this. All right, but one of the reasons why is because, in essence, he sees me at a very important life point of his life where I'm winning. Right at this point in my life, I'm winning, and a lot of you saw your father's losing. A lot of you saw your father's beat down. A lot of you saw your father's hen pecked. A lot, of, a lot of you at 15, 16, 17, 18 saw your father's completely a puss in his own house. All right. A lot of you saw your father's incarcerated. Some of you saw your father's just being a workhorse, right? Meaning that just being used as a utility. Some of you saw your father's drunk and an alcoholic and a crackhead. Some of you never seen your father's. Some of you seen, never seen your father stand up for himself. Some of you never only saw your father on child support. You see what I mean? Do you see where this goes? So, in essence, if a man sees that and the father's always like, man, don't make your mama mad. Oh, man, I can't, I can't, I can't buy you no shoes this week, man. Oh, I can't come by to see you because the family court. A lot of you saw your father's, yes, dear, yes, ma'am. All right, do as your mother say, man, and then we're going to throw her a big party for Mother's Day. You see what I mean? Most of you saw your father's taking goddamn L's. <laughs> Some of you didn't even see your fathers. Some of you women never saw your father enough to even tell your father no. So no, now no man can tell you shit because you're not used to a man telling you shit. All right, so in this day, it is important that if a man is, has a young boy and he is in his teenage years, development years, they should see you winning. 
And that's going to change the trajectory of his life because he's going to say, shit, my dad won standing up for himself. Standing on this square, chest out, stomach in, shoulders back, saying, fuck y'all. We're going to do this. And it is what it is. Then he's most likely going to be on top. He most likely will not settle for being just a, a, a boot licking, shuffling, simp ass, swiper ass ninja. That's the difference to me. Anyway, that's the difference. If a, if a young man sees their dad winning, they going to win. A young man see their dad losing or don't see him at all, a woman, same thing, they going to lose, period. Mm. All right, so if you got a Gen Z guy and, he, and your Gen Z guy, your Gen Z son, your Gen Z daughter, oh, I'm depressed, I'm down. And then you're like, okay, and you coddle them and you... Uh, you don't tell them to cup they balls. Ninja, you, uh, let's take you to a therapist. They got the solution. The, de- the therapist is a damn stranger. All right? They don't know your damn kids. You know your kids. <laughs> you know your damn kids. It's crazy. You literally just dis- handicapped them at a pivotal age where they're going to say, Ninja, let's win, in my opinion. All right? All these damn depressed people should go right to the military. <laughs> right? <laughs> Send they ass right, hoorah, send they ass right to the front line, ninja. Here we go. You want to see some depressing shit? Right here. <laughs> and don't give them nothing but five rounds. You got five rounds, ninja, survive, ninja. And if you use one on yourself, it is what it is. Ninja, y'all got time to sit around and sulk, ninja, right to the front line, bitch, ninja. <laughs> Jesus. Ninja, you go do something. I can't figure out what to do. Okay, cool. Line up. Ten hut, ninja. <laughs> we going to give you something to do. Bitch, ninja, put your boots on. Polish your boots, ninja. Iron your slacks. Ninja, make your bed. Let's start right there, ninja. Early in the morning. Ninja, line up, bitch, ninja. <laughs> the fuck? This is easily solvable. But nope, put them on medication. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. <laughs> Get on the line. Ninja, get the push-up position, you goofy-ass fat, uh, uh, fat, uh, eating, fast food, eating ass kid. But nah, they, I'm telling you, they don't want to solve the problem. They, they don't, they, they don't want to solve the new, problem. New, 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 new world order. Yep, sir, yes, sir, in this bitch. <laughs> right? All right, anyway. <laughs> sick Caleb women, no, take sick Caleb. And if you don't make it, then just sink or swim. It's what it is, all right, anyway. Oh, man, it's crazy. And if they drop out, Ninja, you had your chance, <laughs> all right? You dropped out. Anyway, you dropped out. Ninja, you couldn't hack it. And there goes your life, Ninja. Uh, you're going to be out here floating. Float on, float on. Float, 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 float on, Ninja. Hey, Ninja, you couldn't hack it doing the basic shit. Basic training, you couldn't make it. Bye-bye. I'm not investing anything in you, but that's just me. All right, Ninja, we as the strong as the weakest link out here. We got too many weakest link ass ninjas out here, men and women. And I'm tired of it. It's crazy. All right, I'm tired of it. But if you want to see, if if you want your kids to win, you got to win. That's the simple solution. (laughs) All right, anyway, shout out to Dark Side Foundation says, Coach. That utility question is eye-opening. It's shocking how angry family and friends get when you say no to their request for money. Society really doesn't care about men. Men should love themselves. Indeed. Men. Right, anyway. Uh, Shout out to Faith. I agree, coach. Even Ecclesiastic speaks on toiling of toiling hard for your children for them to end up squandering it. Teach them how to fish. 50 cents oldest son messed up a residual income, but I bet his younger son won't. Indeed. Indeed. So that's where we're at. Teach people how to do stuff. That is the solution to anything. But just giving them things is going to make people dependent on on you, and you're going to break your back trying to keep these people going. Hey, why why give up free money? If I don't have to do anything, why, why advance myself? All right, I had no other option. My mother wasn't going to be, my mother wasn't wealthy. She's a, 
She was um she worked for a lot of good companies, but she wasn't going to help me. My father had a new family. He wasn't in a good position to help me. Like help me be, you know, like give me money. He wasn't in a position of that. He had younger kids younger than me. So I was like, I got to do it myself. And James Brown said it. Go look back when men used to be tough, even though James Brown had a conk in his hair. I don't want nobody to give me nothing. I'll open up the door and I'll get it myself. And I'll get it myself. I don't want nobody to give me nothing. I open up a door and I'll get it myself. All right. That's kind of how I live. Now y'all broke up. Y'all woke up in a weak ass culture. All right. But those are the songs that inspire me. That's when I'd be like, ah, oh, that's it right there. He says CGA's dad was absent. Wrong. My dad was ever present in my life. My dad just had a new family. My dad just got a new family. He married and had more kids. My dad was very present in my life. All right. Your dad was absent. <laughs> All right, and then I moved away. My, me and my mother moved away from my father. He wasn't coming to follow me, Ninja. He had five other kids and a wife. So he stayed where he was, and we went to California. Pretty simple. But my dad was always there. He was always there where he was capable, but he wasn't going to leave his new family for my little ass. It is what it is, but Ninja's out here. They just want to be victims so bad. Mitch's, Mitch's want to be victims so bad. Don't be a victim, man. Don't be a victim. And don't try to bring me down to your level, Ninja. I'm the great one. I overcome shit that you cry about. I overcome shit that you defeat yourself on. Yep, they be projecting. They want me to be so bad like you. Ninja, my situation was worse than you, and I overcame still. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. <laughs> it is, ass Ninja. Stop being a victim, man. Stop self-diagnosing. Stop, stop, stop letting little shit like that. <laughs> little shit like that be literally, these bitch, these new ninjas is like women. These new ninjas is worse than women today. <laughs> All right, anyway. Hey, ladies, man, are you watching me? Are you watching me, ladies? I feel bad for y'all out here. At some point, the more I do this show, the more I realize the woman's plight out here. The more I do this show and the more these men keep coming up in here talking shit is then I start looking at the women and they not as crazy as we thought because they got to deal with Mitch ninjas like y'all out here. <laughs> right mm. now I know ninja because look, can I go off for a second? Can I go off? Can I go? I'm gonna go off. <laughs> The more I do this shit right here. Because, look, women don't see what their other women have to deal with, right? Like, women don't see their competition. So, in essence, they only see what they, how they interact with other men. Men, the same thing. We kind of focused on what women doing all the time. And I never see what you Mitch Ninjas is doing over here. But in reality, now that I look at this shit, it's you Mitch ass ninjas. <laughs> right? Mm. Like sometimes when you be looking. Like black folks. I know y'all be sitting on the corner and hotepping all day. And what happens is you never even touch a suburban community. You never even go outside of this community. So you only know city buses. You only know smog. You only know big ass cities of poverty. You only know corner stores, liquor stores, and pimps. So you never see nothing. And you'd be like, hey, they out here doing this. Well, Ninja, you ain't even out there. All you see is ninjadom. You never even got outside to experience and see it from the other position. So you only know what you see. But you don't realize that ninjas are the problem. You never give it one thought that maybe perhaps the common denominator is the problem. It's you, Ninja. <laughs> and that's you. Yeah, Philly Ninjas. 
It's like, nah, ninja, you don't even know what you don't know. It's actually you're your own problem. You're your own worst enemy. Then let's take it to these men out here. To these men, you like women are the problem. And then you open your mouth. Ninja, what you need to do is learn, and young people need to learn this. Shut up and listen. Young dudes think they know something and, again, don't even own a chest of drawers. Ninja, all your clothes are in baskets. Half of them ain't even folded up. And then got the nerve to come over here and tell me, a grown-ass man, for 30 years I've been a grown-ass man, and I've been killing it as a grown-ass man. Only a short period of my life I started losing. And I came back from that. But really, it's y'all Mitch-ass ninjas at the end of the day. And what we need to do is purge Mitch ninjas. We need to do this right now. <laughs> we need to purge Mitch ninjas. Ninja, the strong ninjas that's want to do this, let's do this. But ninja, we didn't try to coddle y'all and not step on your neck and step on your coat. We didn't try to get you this far. I didn't got you this far. I refuse to let these Mitch ninjas come along in 2024. <laughs> I refuse. I will not be identified by Mitch Ninjanum. It's, it's getting too far. Ninja, I didn't gave you all this. We gave you six years of your life, and you still in here acting like a Mitch. Well, you ain't, you ain't read my book, Ninja. You ain't invested in me. You ain't invested in your own damn self, and you still stuck here like I was too in content in 2019, and you still here, and you ain't changed Nathan about your life. And now you're still in here with this Mitchness. We call it Mitch assness. I can't no more. <laughs> I can't no more. I'm tired. You know, I didn't carry you this far. Some of you listen to me one, two, three, four years. You still there. Don't know how to fold your drawers yet. Like, what do you want me to do about you? It's getting tiresome out here. This is fatiguing for me. <laughs> it's embarrassing for me. Like if I had a convention and some of these Mitches showed up, Ninja, I might have to eject your ass. Oh, hell no. Nah. How long you been listening to me, Ninja? Three years? And you look like that? Oh, hell no. Nah. Ninja, go get this Ninja haircut real quick. <laughs> All right, come on, man. Come back in here, Ninja, with your, ninja, with, with your belly button not folded up over your belt. All right, let's get in shape. Before we come out here and blame these women all the time. <laughs> all right. Any students now? All right. Anyway, it's getting to the point, man. I can make do. Listen, don't let me go viral on Mitch ass ninjas. Ninja. That's what we going to be doing as content half the week. <laughs> and they're going to be like, you changed on us, coach. Coach, you changed. But Ninja, we need to purge y'all. Because you part of the problem. We only as strong as our weakest link. And if you weak ass link ninjas out here trying to link up with me. That we only as strong. The message can only be as strong as the weakest link. <laughs> all right, anyway. Shout out to Renz Cass says Kiki Palmer is all I need to see. Wow. Send it. Yeah, man. Watch out. Oh, man. Oh, brother. I want to inspire the next generation of stronger men, right? He said it was you the whole time. Hold on for a second. Shout out to Mike R. Hey, coach, uh, about all the anxiety and mental health earlier, there's a psychologist who showed you how to beat it and not make excuses named Adler. I read about him in a book called The Courage to Be Disliked. Facts. And he literally gives you none of these excuses and out uses. Uh, he says that he outs using logic he says i think you will like it and at least i think there's a mistake there at least the philosophy this soft ass charming generation could really use it soft as hell soft and the one the one thing about the soft generation let me just say this they only know what they know so a lot of us call them soft and they don't realize it they're like we're not soft well they didn't they didn't they only know what they know so we can't really blame them for not knowing otherwise. You understand? You understand? It's like for us, we know another reality. We, we know the 80s and the 90s. 
like the new generation wasn't born. So that's ancient history to them. They didn't experience it either. So they don't know. So they don't know what they don't know. So when we call them soft, they really don't understand. They're like, I don't get it. We went through problems and struggles as well. Why are you calling us soft? So that's kind of what I looked at. But in reality, for me, they soft as hell. They soft as a goddamn, right? Mm. This generation is soft, bottom line. But listen, I don't want to, because other generations always piss on the other ones. We got pissed on too. Shout out to my brother Benjamin S. Says, hey, coach, this month is the first, first month I make five figures. Joining the six-figure coach gang, yang. He got money. He says, he says, um, you got now two out of the three, six feet, six figures. The six pack needs to be art achieved now. That's what you said right there. Glad I am single. 36 years old. Hit me with the, I got money. I got money. All right. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to you. Congratulations on achieving that great step. Now, you know, it's possible, right? The impossible has been achieved. No government name. XXs are usually the ones complaining and nagging, and men being so solution oriented will end up doing more work. Then we get annoyed every time we're around them. By the way, this isn't a super chat, it's a gift. Shout out to you. Appreciate you, sir. No government name. I'm rich. Yeah, I'm, you guys got to watch out where you get your leadership from. Uh, for most people, they are not going to push through problems, they're going to just sit back. And they're going to eventually let everything fall on top of them, right? They know what they're doing. They know they're in debt. And they'll just be like, well, you don't have to work as hard. And then you'll realize they ha- they, they're they literally going to, co- everything's going to collapse on top of them. And they'll let you lose as well. Josh F. says, that's why I could never be a pro black. It's not that we didn't have struggles. It's that we knew the traps time and time again and still play the victim and did nothing. He says, we danced, rap, and sang along the whole time. And that's just part of what we allowed. Yep. And, but they'll never look at it like that. They'll never look at it. Same as a drug addict. Same as uh, uh, all the other victims out here. It's a disease and it's them. They literally, I saw y'all doing the stanky leg, Ninja. I saw y'all partying. I saw you smoking weed and drinking Hennessy. I saw you fornicating. I saw you bragging about your mouthpiece. You cannot come back out and then, then say you were a victim of something. You can but, Ninja, I ain't hearing it. Shout out to Alexis in the building. He says, Coach Gang Yang. You cannot then come back out later and say, hey, man, it was this. And it was the institution. Ninja, it's just a waste of your breath. Kevin Double. Kevin W. You may have already called this by the time you get this donation. But I think women are experiencing burnout is because they are so involved in all these so- social justice protests that is a fact women always pushing some agenda and i always tell women that i deal with i don't care about your politics i don't care if you're a crusader no i'm not going to the parade get your life together because all of these people the activists always got a effed up life one thing you know about an activist they life is in turmoil And that's why they're an activist. They're looking for someone to blame and fix their problems. So anytime I see an activist woman, I'll be out. I'm like, "Uh uh-uh. Nope. Because that's a victim. That's a perpetual victim. They're a victim of every circumstance. Gender, race, political ideology. They're a victim of every damn thing. I'm like, "Uh -uh." (laughs) uh-uh. I avoid activists. They always impoverished. And then, of course, they're always on drugs. They're always uh, doing some reckless behavior that you don't see. They always like a single mother or four kids, two baby daddies. They be smoking weed. Oh, what's up? They be rolling up. I be looking at them. She be like, you got $200? I swear to God, I was with this one woman, right? A woman at the junior college. She invited me over and then did a, did a bait and switch on me, and I left. So she basically was like, oh, man, you know, I got my period right before you came over. I was like, okay. And I was like, I'm out. She was rolling up a joint and she looked at me. She was like, you got $200? And she, dude, she got, man, she owns a hair salon. I was like, I was like, that's why I don't deal with strags. And yep, she's a victim. She's an activist bitch too. She was always talking about activism, this downtown LA bitch. I was like, man, are you kidding me? 
career professional ass victims. It's ra- crazy. No government name says, I hear that Paul Mooney influence. Shout out, shout out to the legendary Paul Mooney. Indeed. Shout out to Damien says, thank you for going in on them, coach. They, we need it. We need it. We can't avoid it at this point. Any content creator that avoids weak men at this point are you're only doing it to keep your audience. I'm going to say it again. Any content creator in 2024 that avoids talking about the weak men in the manosphere, the weak men in the red pill, the weak men in whatever your philosophy is, if you avoid it, you're only doing so to keep your audience. Now, I get it if you're a new content creator and you're trying to keep your audience and keep them YouTube checks coming in. I understand. But if you're doing this, you're doing everybody a disservice. Faith says, there's some, they're still on milk, coach. They still on milk and they not ready for the meat. Some of them got to get kicked out of school. He says, bunch of super senior ass ninjas, forever a senior. Eight year senior ass ninjas. All right, I think I'm going to catch up here. I, I'm going to do a couple more and get back to the show because we got to get to the main event. Really. And really, we need to get tough on guys. As much as we want to get tough on women, we need to get tough on dudes. Uh, shout out to, uh, let's see here. MC Hamster says, Patrice would say you're, you're in ego and in lust. All right, men are in ego and in lust. Henry Resilient, rumor is Kiki Palmer is doing all of this to get out of child support. And he says Kiki Palmer was granted sole custody and her restraining order went through. Facts. Facts. So that's just breaking news. The contractor, they left me for dead planning my fall. F them all. He says, I'm not paying anyone's bill. Yep. The contractor, I'm south of the border coach and I'm struggling my way up. My divorced mother called the cops on me when I was 19 to force me out of the house. I cut her off later in my life and I'm living well now. And he says, stop victimizing ninjas. The world is what it is. And you will realize we have way more opportunity than almost anyone around the earth. So I just don't understand. I'm going to get back to the show because we got a couple more here. But yeah, Ninja's, Ninja's still on the, their mama's teat. And uh, this is forcing what we're seeing today. What we see today, women suffering from burnout. Now, this is going to be embarrassing portrayal of what we call American women. Now, there's some men that can probably fit in this scenario too. But I want you to see what we're doing to ourselves. All right, first, a couple of pictures here. This is a video of a man who confronts his baby mother about not wanting her child. All right, so I'm going to play the video, then we'll constructively criticize it. Then we'll look at the comments. This is ridiculous, man. Like, you, it's pathetic. This is a handsome baby. A handsome baby, and you talking about you can't handle one child? I can't. I can't. One child, really? Yeah. So let me tell y'all what's going You're on. You're not a mother. You let don't me, know. Let me tell y'all what's going on. No. What so I done let my baby don't, mother, don't help the child, I mean, the mother the mother of my child, I done let her come over for a few days to get her life together. And she said she was going to, you know, look for jobs and, you know, basically just get her life together, man, because it's, it's not it's not going so good. And And then she came out of nowhere saying that, she can't handle having one child and it's too much uh stress she going through stuff yeah this is not the first time that this something happened like this she real life real life don't want to do no more her life like she don't want to take care of her responsibilities man we not even together like i just said y'all like i don't know what's wrong with her you know what i'm saying i'm i told her that's fine. You can stay here for a few days while I go make my money. You know, I'm a busy man. You know what I'm saying? I even gave her $500, $500, thousands, like every week, every week. You know what I'm saying? And she, this. All right. So what we see here, you guys see it for the podcast people. There's a young black mother. She does look young. Um, She definitely looks probably about early 20s. She's very petite. She's wearing a black dress. She's crumpled up in the corner by a door surrounded by plastic bags, which I would assume would be her possessions or trash. All right. And um, she looks very depressed. She looks down. She's sitting in the corner. Guys, this is a sign of what they would call depression. 
All right. And people in the comment section are saying, hey, um, you know, she's depressed. She's suffering for postpartum depression. And uh, she says, hey, you don't understand what it's like to be a mother. Her child probably is uh, not disciplined. She's not doing a good job of training the child. And the child is probably reckless and she can't control the child. She's probably trying to change the, train the child to be a liberal, meaning that she refuses to abuse the child verbally. She refuses to set the kid straight, train the kid right. All right. And so the kid's probably out of control. Now, she sounds like what the guy's saying is they're not even together. He's probably paying child support. And now she's throwing in a towel. And now she wants to move back in. So she's trying to get back in with the guy. Hey, I need to stay at your place for a little bit. And she's using the baby mama card. Then he says, I tried to help you out. I paid you child support. I paid you thousands of dollars. Bitch, you still ain't did shit. Mm. Now, this is common of a lot of women who experience what they call postpartum depression. I'm not a big believer in it. I'm not going to listen. I understand being a mother is tough. I understand your hormones and emotion. I'm not going to say, hey, this woman's going through it. Therefore, we can put up with her doing dumb shit. Because the reason why is because most of these women that suffer from this, they got one or two children, one or two. Now, your granny has seven to 10 kids. Your great granny had 22. Mm. And it's somewhat pathetic that we live in a world today where a woman can have one kid or two and throw in the damn towel in life, sitting in a corner rocking. Now, I've experienced this. I've experienced this. This is just weakness. I don't care what you pseudo psychologist says. This is weakness. All right. She's just quitting. All right. If you got enough energy to ask me for money, bitch, you got enough energy to stand up on your own too and go get a damn job. This is crazy. But we put a baby in the woman. All right. And then now we got to deal with this. This woman don't want to do nothing. That's just simply what it is. And she's lost, disoriented. She don't have instruction. She has no outlook in life. And that's what it is. You just can't just sum it up and just say it's depression or postpartum depression. I ain't going for that. I'm not just going to go for that. What do I do now with this information? Wait for it to go away? All right. <laughs> Sit her in therapy. What is that going to do for me today? <laughs> All right. We need to whip her ass in line. Get in line. Wake up. Ninja buttercup. Suck it up. Or get out. Or get out. That's what you need to do. Get out. So what they're going to say is just, this is postpartum depression. This is bullshit to me. Mm. All right, because that don't help me feed my kid. That don't help me bring in a check. That don't help me support my family. That don't help me because now she's going to lean on that. Now she's going to just say, I still got it. Mm. I got it for seven years. She's just a lazy piece of shit with no vision. That's just what she is, in my opinion. She's just lazy. All right, now people go say, no, nah, man, you got to appreciate and empathize. Nope. Nope. Go for a run, exercise, everything, all of your solutions are in the palm of your hand. But then you're just going to want to lean on the fact that you're just going to be lazy and sandbag on me. All right, nah, man, I just don't understand. You just don't know where to go now. All right, maybe we can help you out. Let's set some goals. Let's get some vision. Let's write this down. All right, but but a lot of people are just burnt out on doing the basics. She, she's, she, she doesn't have a good, also, she doesn't have a good uh, people to lean on. She don't have a family. She don't have a mother, a father, right? And so she's just going to lean on. I'm going to get, guys, this is giving up. This is giving up. I mean, you completely gave up on your kid. You completely gave up on the father. I mean, I don't understand that. Now, what do we do with this information? <laughs> what do we do? Like, and she's embarrassed. And if she needs help, go get it. But now people are saying he's shaming her. Here it is right here. Not, uh, this is right here. Every mother understands exactly what she's going through. Prayers for her and the little man. Well, they're going to have to, they're going to have to overcome this. She said what she said, either help her or shut up. No, 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 no. She needs to help herself. She needs to help herself. Everybody tells the man to help her. Okay. Watch this. Hey baby, you need to go to a therapist. I bet you she goes crazy. <laughs> what is he supposed to do to help her? Hey, baby, you looking kind of crazy. You looking depressed. Why don't you go help herself? I can almost guarantee any person that's dealing with depression, I can guarantee if somebody told you to go to a therapist or, or solve your depression, I bet you they don't go, <laughs> right? They don't go. But all of a sudden, he's the solution. Why is he the solution? How, how is he the solution? I guess the cure for depression is public humiliation now. This is a cry for help. Cry for help. My question is, she don't got a car? She don't got a bus? <laughs> she don't got a bus pass? She don't got two feet? She don't got an iPhone? 
Like, how is that? What am I supposed to do with this information? This is a cry for help. You got two feet. Walk over there, right? Walk over where the help is. I'm not here for that, okay? I don't mm. got time for that. She got to be able to want to do it herself, and I'm not going to be here to uh, facilitate this. I am not a rest haven for mentally ill people. If you're mentally ill, go get some damn help. It, right over there, all right? Get the walking. I'm not a rest haven for that. But this is just giving up on life. And uh, people want to classify it as this. This is mad whack. Why record her? Ninja evidence. That's why. <laughs> why record her? Because I need evidence. Because if he doesn't record her, she can say anything she wants. As she's rocking in the corner and not knowing what she needs to do. He probably, he probably stunned right now. He's like, what the hell is this? And guys, I've seen this myself. I have seen this in my life. And let me just tell you as a bit of advice, it doesn't get better. There's no cure for it. There's relapses. There's a current, oh, there, it, guys, I'm going to just tell you right now. I don't care what you do to try to help this. They got to help themselves. It does not get better. They live with this forever. Why? Because they choose weakness. They choose to give up. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy, but it is what it is. You guys got to pay attention to this. You guys got to pay attention. This does not get better. All right. It's just going to manifest into another form of depression or anxiety or stress or mental head meds or three therapists. She's using the playbook. It doesn't get better. There's no solution for this. There's no cure. She can sit up in therapy forever. It, uh, it ain't going to get better. All right, just to let you know. It ain't going to get better. I haven't seen many cases of where this got better. All right, so please, please believe what I'm telling you. All right, and I w it, here's my question now. Is she able to drive a car? Is she able to be a better parent, that child? She should lose custody of the child until she gets better. Who agrees with that? Nobody agrees with that. Why does she have custody of that child if she's crumpled up in a corner? <laughs> right? I bet you you guys will turn out now. Oh, no, man, that'll cause more harm. Shut up. You agree? Why does she able to drive a vehicle with the child in it? Why is she able to drive a vehicle with a child in it if she's looking like that? Take her driver's license away. Why is she able to vote? Take her voting rights away. Why is she able to parent the child? How? How do we keep trying to evolve at these solutions where I'm supposed to be like, she needs help. Ninja, she need to be treated like a child. <laughs> Why is she able to have custody solo if she can't even make it through her own life? The child is in danger. Her custody should be stripped until she can demonstrate that she can be a mature parent. But nope, you ain't going to do that either, are you? All right, but no, I'm supposed to sympathize for her. I'm supposed to act like she got postpartum depression. Nope, I bet you I'll fix it real quick. Okay, no custody and you can't drive. <laughs> mm. Oh, what? Oh, okay, all right. I, I, oh, I'm good all of a sudden. That's what I thought. <laughs> here we go right here. Yo, I'm supposed to get into a car with... Hey, by the way, if you got depression, I'm not letting you drive me anywhere. <laughs> Your depression gonna kick in and literally you gonna j throw my car into the ravine. I can straighten this shit up real quick. I got depression. And then you be like on the weekend, hey man, let's go. I'm gonna drive you. No, you ain't. <laughs> Ninja go take, my, take his car and go 90 miles an hour into a damn fuel truck. All right, Ninja, ride passenger. Ninja, you in the back seat with two seat belts on, just in case you flip out. Anyway. Mm. All right, here we go, man. I'll be curious. I can cure this shit up real quick. All right, just start taking away rights. Here's another one. Woman breaks down on TikTok, of course, from the struggle of being a single mother. All right, let's hear what she got to say, man. Let's hear this sob story, yeah, shit. All right, let me see here. By the way, single motherhood is a choice. So, like, I'm literally just in my kitchen, and I really want to know how people manage to just stay strong every day for their kids. Like, I am struggling. I am mentally struggling. Just being a single mom and having to do everything on my own. Like, 
It's draining. It's so emotionally draining. And I try to find the strength every day. But I just don't have it anymore in me. So, yeah, let me know how you guys manage to keep it together every day. Because I have no support. No support. Everybody that told me, oh, they're going to be there for me and my kid, this and that. When is the time for y'all to show up? Y'all leave. And that's what got me fucked up because why? Like, so. Like, hey, get this woman off my screen. Like, All right, so uh, there it is. I mean, we just got burnout. Menta I'm mentally struggling. We're just not preparing young people. We're just not. And listen, everybody gets down. We're just not preparing people. I mean, she has a young child. She chose single motherhood. She chose child support checks. She, po she chose a dusty ass ninja. All right, more than likely. She doesn't have a village around her because, you know, everybody got to go to work, man. You don't have time to have a village around us. Um, I believe, you know, when we get to these conversations about women working and not working, I think the best thing that women can do in our society right now is become a village. Support each other. Support women. Support young mothers. Be there for them. All this career shit and job outside the house. I mean, listen, we can't go back. We're stuck. But we are in a situation where everybody's trying to raise kids their own. And we also have, we distance ourselves from our, our family. Our grandmother lives in Phoenix. Our mother lives in Chicago. Right? Our daddy lives in Alabama. Then you start a family over here. And then you have the kids and everybody all spread out. And everybody's working, trying to survive and do all their own. Where's the village at? It takes a village. These women don't have support. Then they don't have support. They choose the wrong mate. And they have fun and party, smoke, drink, fuck. And then they produce kids and then, then they break down. And then they just got to come in and save them, right? Because she's cute. And then just come in with the cape. All right, still feeling sorry for them. I don't feel sorry for them. We just have a messed up system, unfortunately. Uh, but they're breaking down just doing the basics. Now when we get here, we got another one here. Got another one here. Here's another one. This woman here actually says she did it right and she can't do it. All right, so here we go right here. Where's the volume? At what age did you wake up and realize that you no longer wanted to be a strong, black, independent woman? And this can apply to white women and men as well, because I've definitely heard this term coined by a lot of people. But for me, it was about six months ago. I legit woke up, realized that I've slayed all of my goals. I have my career. I have my house. I have the car. I have everything else. And I don't want it anymore. Jeez. If you can't relate to what I'm saying, then you can't relate to what I'm saying. All right, come on. But for me, bring it at 32. 32. And a couple more months left till I'm 33. Damn. Okay, man. She looks young. She looks young for 32, 33. But uh, guys, 32, 33 is not that old yet, but it's old. You know what I mean? Like you're about to hit that wall. You're about to hit 40. You're knocking on 40's door. And that's what's happening. She's having the epiphany, the realization of all these things that I chase was supposed to bring me happiness. It, it doesn't. And let me just say this. Even if you're a man, all these things we chase, you want shoes, you want Jordans, you want you want the nice car, the watches. Ninja, when you get them, it ain't going to be shit after a while. There's going to be some other shit over there, especially when you can afford it. I'm like, let me go buy a watch. Okay, there it is. There it is in the watch box. Okay, it looks nice. And then the next day, you're going to wake up and oh, that watch doesn't bring you as much happiness. That car is not going to make you smile very much. So we chase these things. We get it. And the best thing about life is that you got it and you realize... I still got to go out there and go get something else. All right, so here we go. She basically chased all the things that was supposed to bring her happiness. She ain't got no man, I'm pretty sure. And let's see how this ends up here. I realize that my priorities are changing. And now I want to be a housewife. No. Oh, no. All, the humanity. all right, so here we go. Here's the pivot. Here's the pivot. Uh, and, and what we're seeing is the economy is kicking a ass. And the only reason why women are burning out and doing this and saying this overwhelmingly is they know that they got all of these houses and cars. They got all of these responsibilities, obligations, and liabilities, some assets, and it's still not enough. 
it still ain't enough. Ninja, I be fighting hard out here. And I still like, damn, Ninja, it ain't enough. <laughs> All right? Like, I still got to fight harder and harder and harder. Some people give up. Man, I, I've been fighting hard and still can't make any headway. I, and all she got is bills and shit. She like, okay, now I don't want to be a housewife. Mm. Ma'am, you made a decision. Unfortunately, women have a short window. They got to decide. You want a career or you want to be a housewife? It's almost no going back. Whatever you go, that's the way you're going. And what's happening here is that, is that, uh, and I've done this. I've taken most, most jobs a coach takes, the team sucks. That's why the job is open. Every now and then, a coach will come in and, and, and they'll take a team that's already set up to win. Most times, a, a, a coach comes in, you get a team that's all messed up, the culture's messed up, the mindset is messed up, the players are messed up. So then you got to take all these years to, quote, unquote, rebuild. What you're going to find is when you take a new coaching job or rebuild, you got to change the mindset and the culture. One of the biggest obstacles that you will have is that the players don't know how to win. They may be talented, but they don't know how to win. Then what you're going to do is you're going to say, this is how we're going to win. And then you're going to tell everybody, boom, 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 and you got to have to do these things. At some point, they'll buy in. Then what will happen is they'll get their ass kicked because it's new culture to them. So it'll be tough. Hey, we're going to lose a couple of games, but we still got to stay to the plan. What you're going to find out is half the team is going to say, well, guess what? We just want to have fun. Basketball ain't fun no more. Football ain't fun no more. And then what you'll find is that they don't want to win. And you'll find out what the problem is. This is why you got to weed out the weak. You got to purge. Because they wanted to win, but they didn't want to do what it takes to win. This is what women suffer from. They wanted the career. They wanted the house and the car. But now you got to do this forever. You got to do this for the next 40 years. You got to do this alone. You got to struggle. You got to have all everything you want and still be unhappy. Because you're going to not be happy. They thought if they was going to do this, they're going to be unhappy. But what they're finding out now, that now, this is what it takes to do this shit. And you're going to do this shit. You're going to do it. You're going to do it right. And then when the economy starts kicking their ass and they start realizing their paycheck ain't going up and they start realizing that it ain't at all, it ain't all crystal and parties, and it ain't all excess money. Now them motherfuckers is like, oh, we got to do this and win? Oh, hell no, 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 no. Life ain't fun no more. See, this is what we're experiencing. It ain't fun. I thought it was going to be fun. Now we got to do all this. See, the winning team is willing to sacrifice. They willing to put in that work. They willing to weed out the weak. They willing to stay with the culture. They willing to deal with the coach's bullshit. When you win and it's cool, when you start losing, the motherfuckers want to quit. They don't want to do, oh, this is what it takes to win? Oh, no. Nah. See, this is what we happen now. See, Ninja, you got to dig deep now. Uh, uh, you, you chose the life of 40 years of slave. And this is the culture of American women. They finally got everything they want, and you see they ass pivoting now. Oh, I want to be a housewife now. <laughs> oh, we got to be responsible now? Oh, I got to save and be, oh, shit, okay, inflation hitting? Oh, no, we going to war? Now, they don't want to win. Now, they burnt out. That's what we see. And, and I'm going to give you the evidence of this. Watch this. Look at this. See, watch, look at these headlines right here. This is from January 2020. January 2020. You see this on my screen? I'm going to teach you what it is. January 2020. This is before COVID lockdowns and quarantines. This is before six weeks, 30 days to slow the spread. They was bragging. Women now hold more jobs than men in the U.S. workforce. You see this? This was less, this was less than four years ago. This was three years ago. They was bragging about the workforce. See, everything was coochie. Everything was good. Everything was, everything was mahi-mahi. Everything was flowing. Everything was easy. I didn't hear shit about a burnout. They was bragging about y'all broke ninjas. And women out, outnumber men in the workforce. You see this? You see this? Did you hear about burnout then? Nope. All right, let me stop. Watch this. This is from, this is from March 2022. Young women are out earning young men in several U.S. cities. Mm. Uh-oh. 
Did you hear about burnout then? They was laughing at y'all. They was calling y'all losers. They was calling y'all lames. They was big up in women, right? And they was like, we got this. This was before really the recession started coming in. This is when, when you stopped feeling, you wasn't feeling the pain yet. But look, they bragging. They out earning young men. All right, hold on for a second. I got some more for you because I came to bring the pain. This is September 2022. Women now outnumber men in the U.S. college education labor force. Oh, it was good then. They was talking ish then. They were slapping you in the face with it then. Black women were more educated than black women. Oh, it was good then. Where's the, where's the burnout at? Y'all was winning. It was easy. You was had money flowing. You had PPP loans. Your credit was good. Aha. Now the recession started whipping that ass. And here's the headlines now. Here's the headlines now. Look at it now. And these are, this is what we see now. Women are turning, women aren't turning the lazy girl jobs because they are work shy. They're significantly more burned out than men. <laughs> And Kevin Samuel says he winner is here. Kevin Samuel said winner is here. See that money ain't stretching no more. That student loan, hey, them student loan payments done kicked back in. Now we burnt out. Mm. All right. CGA said the barbarian is at the gate. And when the barbarian kicked the gate down, there's no negotiation. Nobody listened. Everybody was like, what do you mean by the barbarian hit the gate? Now you see what's happening? Now they don't want to win. They don't want to do what it takes to win. Now they didn't saw. Now you're responsible. You got the degrees. You got the jobs. There's no more gender pay gap. Now you outwork men. Now they burning out. <laughs> now they getting that right. They want to quit. They want to quit. They want to give up. They want to be a housewife. Just, <laughs> let's get back to this when we're here. They don't want to win. This is what happens when you put them, I've been saying for a long time, putting them in charge and following them is the worst idea of all time. It's a, it's a shit test. It's a bait and switch. Ninja should have never abdicated position to women leading. Because then they want to cry. Then they want to be in postpartum depression. Okay, where is it at? Where's the postpartum depression, chick? Then they want to cry like this. Then they got, dude, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you as men, not to put, not to put down women, but equality is not good for society. It's not it guys. I'm not being massage. Equality is stupid. We should never try to be in a position where they try to lead us. And we, we, we having meetings to go and it's a double head snake. No, 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 no. Men need to step up and lead. Men need to be in the front. Men need to be the ninjas calling the shots. I'm sorry. It's the only way around it. <laughs> it's, uh, that's it. Letting them do this is dumb because then they're going to pull the okie doke. All right, let's go back to the okie doke. Now, what she's saying, I want you to understand that men can't make the decision she's making. Mm. This is why it's dumb to give them this and then let her bait and switch and then pull the rug. What she's asking to do, you can't do. You can't just be like, oh, I worked for 10 years. All right, I'm done. I'll be a house husband. Mm. You can't, we can't switch. So to allow them at a one age to go that way and then they don't want to win no more and pivot back, we can't do it because you messing up the system. We would mess up the system. All right, let's continue here. This is crazy here. I want to raise children. I don't want responsibilities. I don't want to have a mortgage. Actually, I do want a mortgage, but I don't want it to be in my name. I honestly want to relinquish Relinquish. responsibility to an able-bodied man. Keyword, able-bodied man. What? And this is such a new thing. Hold up, dude. We need to bring back polygamy. We need to bring back polygamy at this point. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. You're going to relinquish. Do you, hey, ladies, she literally just quit. Oh, nope, I'm done. I want the mortgage not in my name. I need a man that can lead, baby. Oh, 
Jesus. But I don't want it to be in my name. I honestly want to relinquish responsibility to an able-bodied man. Keyword, able-bodied man. And this is such a new thing for me. And this is epiphany. And this is something that I've been struggling with. Why is my lip gloss not opening? Why am I struggling with my lip gloss right now? Let's pause this video so that I can... Never mind. So... This is something that I've honestly been struggling with because it's something that I've never thought that I would get to the point in my life where I no longer identified as a strong black independent woman. Jesus. And it's oh, crazy because I remember growing up or in my 20s, I would hear of women who would go out, they would seek these fabulous careers, attorneys, doctors, lawyers, whatever it is, whatever they wanted. And then all of a sudden, they would get married, and they would give it all up. And I used to think, what the actual... Who does all this to give it up to be a stay-at-home mother? And then I turned 32 and a half, and I realized it is I. I am that woman. Mm. <laughs> oh, man, we in trouble. We in trouble, man. And this is what, guys, I, I, I know people are like, you know, yeah, thank God for social media. But here's the thing. At my age, I've already been through this. I've been through this cycle of life where I experience women going through this epiphany phase. Right? I've been through it. So I've already seen it. You haven't seen it yet because you might be 30, 35, maybe under 30. I've seen this. I've seen women do this pivot. Like I've had you know, a spouse that did the pivot. You know what I mean? I've had women in my life. I've seen women turn 40 and all of a sudden I'm looking for a man. I'm a single mom, but you let's be a power couple and let's work this out. And they leverage, Hey, I have a career. I'm a responsible person. Hey, I have a mortgage and you know, they have these things, but they can't make it. So then they start trying to do the power couple shit and, uh, you know, get together and you're 40. I'm out 40 and we make a great couple. All it is, is them saying they don't want to be leading anymore. They led, they were like a single mom or they had to do the child support about to run out in two to three years. And then they start latching. See, I've been through this. I've experienced this. This is why I can tell you that all women are going to go through this. It, they're going to think about this and you're going to go through it. And then they're going to start leveraging. Hey, I'm 36. Let's get married and see. Yeah. Identity mm -hmm. crisis. Identity crisis. Yep. Somebody said this is when the moment of truth meets the point of no return. They all go through this 35, 36 for the women that didn't have kids and wanted to party. Oh, I want to get married now. I want to have a baby. Now you got in vitro fertilization. It's crazy, crazy stuff that I've all experienced in my life. So we're now seeing it on social media. And this is why I can tell you it's a bait and switch. Even if a wife is married, she'll bait and switch you. She'll say, I want to go work. <laughs> and she'll like, I want to be a stay at home mom. I want to raise kids and she'll do the opposite of this because she thinks the happiness is in the career, right? So she'll do this. She'll be like this. Oh, raising kids is hard. This is when you hear women say unpaid labor, doing chores. He doesn't help. I do all the work. I practically do everything. It's hard. And then they'll say, well, I'll just go to work and then they'll bait and switch you. And then they'll go to work. And then, then, then when it doesn't work out, they want to run back to the house or she goes to work, cheats, or she goes to work, it ends in a divorce and breaking up the family. Then she comes back and says, but I was the primary mother and I need more custody and child support. Guys, when I say the reason why I do what I do is because I know that a lot of women go through this identity crisis, it's going to fall back in our lap. This is why I take the approach of I'm taking the lead. Hell out of this. Everybody follow or get out of my way. I'll just do it from here. <laughs> I'll take it from here, bitch. No, nah, nah, I don't want to hear what you. No, no, no. Know your role. The reason why I have this approach is because I know they're going to bait and switch. They're going to pivot. And then they're going to throw this shit in your lap. They'll destroy your path. You'll be depending on them. Like this woman right here. This woman goes. You'll be depending on her. Hey, we have the house, the mortgage. You pay your 50%. I pay my 50%. 
and then she'll bait and switch. I want to be a housewife. And you're like, well, how are we going to support this now? You're going to go back and I got to now go get an extra job, an extra side hustle, and it's going to blow the marriage up. What about this? The opposite. She's a housewife. Then she bait and switch. I want to go to work. Obviously, she got to work her way back up. The work is going to not even be sufficient enough to support the family. Then she gets to the point where she can do that or she can't. Then all of a sudden, she's going to switch again and say, I want to just stay home with the kids. And now the money's messed up. Or she makes more money and she says, this is my money. We're going to survive off you continuing to pay and support the family. Like that'll happen. Your wife will be a stay at home mom. She'll go to work and she'll say, this is my money because you already were paying all the bills anyway. So keep paying the bills. The extra money is my money. I'm telling you guys, this is why you cannot lead. I'm sorry. This is why they cannot lead. In my opinion, I'd rather take the lead. I'd rather just take the lead. <laughs> it's because they be flipping flopping. I yearn to be a stay at home mom. I no longer want to take on all the responsibilities. I want to delegate it to a man. I want to live a soft life. <laughs> And a small part of me feels like I've worked for that. I've worked. I've proven to myself. I feel like I've proven to my parents. I've proven to the world that I can do it. 32. And now that that has been proven, I no longer want it. And at 32, I think men have reached their peak of whatever it is that they do. <laughs> she don't care. Whatever it is that you do, you just a utility. You reach the peak of whatever you do. Just, just pay the bills. Remember, we had this conversation early. They don't give a fuck, man. They really be in their own solipsism. Like, it's it's mind-boggling. This is mind-boggling. And they've caught up. And I think that I'm finally comfortable with letting them take the lead. I just need a applicant. I just need a utility. I just need a pet wallet. I just need... A simp. I just need somebody to just do their job. They finally caught up. They they starting to hit their arc. Okay, these ninjas ain't bum ninjas no more. Okay, let me just jump and go grab me one from the boyfriend store. All right, where's the boyfriend store? All right, let me just go grab me one. Come on. All right, y'all been begging me for the last 10 years to hit. All right, I'll let somebody hit. Come on. Just just move in. Just move. Hey, ninja, don't ask no questions. Just come on. <laughs> This is wild. I love it. Does anybody else feel that way? Am I the only one that feels that way? Sound off below. <laughs> oh, man. That per hey, she did it at the perfect time. 32, 33. And that's you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I bring a lot to the table. All right, but what are we seeing here? Here, let me give you one more article. Then we'll clean it up here. They're debunking lazy girl jobs. What women really want. I'd be, I'd love to hear this. All right, what? So I could focus on my career. All right, so they got, again, this is an example of they don't know, they don't want to do what it takes to win. All right, so they're saying women don't want lazy girl jobs. All right, what do they want? All right, let's, let's start with the men. It says right here, men's top reason for taking next job. They have to. They ain't got no choice. That's reason number one. Ninja, if you don't work, you don't eat. All right, but uh, it says right here, significant income increase or an improved benefit package. That's number one. Greater work-life balance, better personal well-being, number two. Greater stability and job security. Allows me to do what I do best. Organization has a great, great reputation or brand. All right, what is it for women? It goes in the opposite order. What women's top reason for taking a new job? Greater work-life balance and personal well-being, a.k.a better mental health, better work-life balance, and so forth, right? So the number, the priority switches for it's number two for num for men, it's number one for women. But what there's, it sounds like when I hear this is that I don't have to do as much work or I get to, you know, it's four days work week, three days off. The income is number three, significant income increase. So the pay gap is manifested. Why there would be a pay gap? Women take jobs for work-life balance, not for pay. 
I mean, this is just what I'm seeing here. So then when the pay gap argument comes up, well, that's not a priority for women, obviously. Mm. Or it is, but it's not oh, number one. For men, it's number one. Where the money at? <laughs> right? For women, it's three. Number three. They'll take less money for a greater work-life balance. And then they could go find a man, a simp, somebody else to fill in the blanks. See? Mm. So they're saying that, that, that that's priority, but the work-life balance argument simply suggests that, that they're looking for an easier, easier kind of, all right, they care about me and they let me take mental health break. I mean, that, it, it just doesn't seem like that's a sustainable idea. And uh, it's manifested here. Women are seeking lazy girl jobs because they're experiencing burnout at a higher rate than men. You guys got to understand these medias are reporting this. Uh, this is kind of bait and switchy. It's a bait and switchy because when they were winning and the economy was good, there was no burnout. It was you dusty ninjas, right? We're more educated. We earn more. More of us are working. You lame ninjas ain't doing nothing but playing video games and buying OnlyFans. Now, now, now we burned out, <laughs> right? Why you burned out? What you burned out for? Let me give you one more solution. You're probably burned out from this right here. <laughs> and a lot of people ain't going to see it. But a much of their burnout is from riding a cock carousel. That's just what it is. Because they're trying to make time to date. A lot of them are in the spirit of fornication. A lot of them are trying to do this balance of work and life so they can go fornicate. Not a lot of them have mates. A lot of them are trying to party and have social life and friends and friends at work and happy hour and salami fornication. A lot of them trying to do all this at the same time. Some of them trying to raise kids, sustain marriages. All right, but that's where they really burnt out because let's just be quick. Let's just be clear. Let's just be clear. You got work-life balance. That means your money looking funny. That's number one. Number two, number two, when you out here staying up late at night, getting your insides pushed to your esophagus, and then getting drunk, drinking, and smoking, and straight West Coasting, all right, and you out enjoying the women reading the weather, and you out here staying up late on five serial dates to make your rent, okay? Your rent's due, motherfucker. Ninja, you ain't going to be able to go in and do the job you need to do. You're going to need some work and life balance. Okay, you like, can I work four days so you could go out there and <laughs> this is crazy, man. All right, but they work like balance on the fifth day. They out here. <laughs> they don't know what to do. Getting throttled out here. All right, you're trying to look for a man out here to try. They doing orgies, going on girl trips and bait brothers. It's hard when you out here trying to sell. When I start selling pussy, I don't want to hear it. Okay, sugar daddy, man. It's hard to have three sugar daddies and work in life. Get him, daddy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's hard when your, hot, when your side hustle is, is to see your sugar daddy. Okay, daddy. All right. And be up on the internet scrolling all night. And then you need to take your bitch ass to sleep. This is crazy. But this is my opinion on the work-life balance thing and the burnout. You're seeing a, a lot from women. And the last point is the, the economy's crushing them. Okay? You, you, you did what it takes to win. I gave you instructions to win, and they simply don't want to win no more. That's what's happening. Anyway, let me get to these super chats. All right, appreciate y'all watching today's show and the full week show. Expect some edits. I got some work to do, man, because I got to get a lot of edits out, and I'm going to get back on my editing game and uh, all of that stuff as I pivot into uh, 2024. <clears throat> Thank you, Henry. Uh, Kiki Palmer was granted uh, the sole custody. Uh, let me see here real quick. Let me just pop up the news here. The restraining order definitely went through, it sounds like. Oh, there it is right there. Update. Just so we can put it up. Um, guys, when you get the restraining order in, you guys got to understand the game. She played it just so good. Kiki Palmer accuses ex-boyfriend of abuse. Judge grants TRO. Done. Mm. Ring the bell on this ninja. He had his chance and he blew it. Hey, guys, never never give women a second chance to get your monkey ass. Never take an ex back. Never go back to an ex. Your baby mama shows her ass. Ninja, just go ahead and just walk off. 
And so he had the leverage. He had the custody. He was the primary parent. She flipped it, waited for enough time to flip it, and he showed his ass. He got emotional, and now he's not. He's going to lose his child. Okay, guys, this is not a game. Y'all guys, you guys treat. All right, so um, the restraining order was granted. Obviously, that's going to mean that um, it says he accused. She accused it. Whatever she's accusing of him of, it's whatever at this point. She accuses him of of emotional abuse and love bombing. I mean, we saw how this played out, guys. We saw how this played out. All right, um, guys, you choose the wrong partner. They've only been together for two years. His life was probably going pretty decent. He chose this path. You choose the wrong partner, done. Sad, sad reality, man. Relationships, guys, can go left on you quick. And he didn't pay, guys, right? He didn't pay either. He actually had a woman that was the, the uh, breadwinner. His dumb ass doesn't know how to manage it. Your partner, picking your partner is priority number one. You got to do some vetting. Carter says, men need to do like Tia and tomorrow's ex. No arguing, no fighting, threatening, or calling her out for monkey branching. He gave her no ammunition. Now she looks crazy trying to explain the split. Yep, your girlfriend does something, man. Just walk smooth the hell off. Don't convince her. Don't threaten her. Don't fight. Don't argue, ninja. The best thing you can do, just walk out the door or tell her to walk out the door if you have the, if you have the leverage. All right, but that's a whole complicated situation. Just walk off. All right, it's crazy. But y'all ninjas get in your feelings, man. You Actually, she doing you a favor. Um, organized Truth, thank you for your daily Truth CGA. We need it. Now, more than ever right now, we need to protect you, Anton and the angry man and the Satan, the center at all costs. Shout out to my bros out here in the message. All right. We don't always have to agree, but shout out to my bros in the message. I think I collaborated with all of these brothers, except for um, I can't I, I've had Anton on my show, but it was brief. So we haven't done an official collab, but we will shout out to NSS CGA. What are your thoughts on Generation Alpha? Is that what you're saying? Um. There's still, the jury's still out. I think the oldest Gen Alpha got to be 12 or 13. Jury's still out, but I can imagine them ninjas going to be tippy-toeing through the tulips. Um, Face Facts says, I say it all the time. Women do not love their children. Facts, they only love the benefits they receive from the attachment of the child, and that cannot be easily disputed. All right? That cannot be easily disputed. All right, but uh, shout out to Daniel McGee. He says, got called a misogynist now. I'm embraced being the bad guy. No dead weight, peace, quiet, and freedom. Coochie sweating now. Free agent lifestyle, thanks, CGA. The regular dude, I have no sympathy for a person who can pick up a phone and get on Facebook and cry. Facts. Got to be the most psychotic-ish I ever seen. He says, attention-seeking I ever seen at its finest. Yeah, if you cry on the internet, you automatically a loser to me. Loser. You're a loser. Like, if that's your video and you recorded that shit and you posted it, L. Mm. I, I mean, I don't have a lot of sympathy, but a lot of people be like, oh. But you got on and cried. That's manipulation at its finest. Unless it was a short clip from your video, if it was a short clip. But there's no reason to cry on the internet. Uh, Anthony Allen, coach, thank you for all that you do. Before divorce, I started college, and when she divorced me, she thought she was going to knock me off of my destiny. Never am, it says right here, never am making the grade at 53. Never at 53. Thank you, Coach. Sorry. He says, I don't know what part of that means. It says, knock me off of my destiny. Never am making the grade. Shout out to you. All right, at 53. Shinoku. Shinku. Shout out to you, Bishes. Still talk about equality. He says, who screams when ish goes down? We are not equal. He says, we need to cuff our balls and tell these bitches. 100%. All right, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I always tell, always tell my, like, you're not going to lead anything in here. You're not going to lead anything. You're going to follow. And I don't even have to tell you. You're going to follow. Like, some of these things that I say, I paraphrase it. I don't even say, you're going to follow, I'm going to lead. You don't even have to. In fact, a best sign of a salesman. I'm going to give you sales training. Are we in four hours yet? 319. 
I'm going to tell you something to test if a woman's going to follow you. And this is a sales tactic. And I'm not telling you to have her follow you. But if you're vetting a woman and you're dating, because we have a lot of people that date in their relationships and marriage. If you're in a sales situation and you're up, you're not sitting at a desk. If you're selling something to someone and you walk away, like you just say, you just turn and walk. So the person's listening to you. I'm giving you my sell pitch. I turn and walk and I take a couple steps this way or that way. If they follow me, they listening. If they're following me, they're interested. If they're following me, I got them on the hook. Now, if I walk away from them and they don't walk with me and they walk away, they run, right? I don't got them. They just kind of just listen to my sales pitch. So it's a non-communicative way to see if they're following your lead. Women are the same way. You don't have to tell them to follow. You don't have to convince them to follow. They just going to get in line. Get in line. Right? I w- I'm not going to say if I'm selling cars and I say, there's a car over here I want you to see. And I say, follow me. And they just follow you just out of obligation. They're not interested. What you do is they're looking. You're looking at this car. And you tell them about this car. Then you just start walking to another car. If they follow you, they ready. You don't have to communicate it. You don't have to say it. You don't have to threaten them. You don't have to pull your hand back. You don't have to pimp them. (laughs) You just literally walk and they follow you. That means they're in line. They don't have to say, I'm going to follow you. They don't have to say, here I come. They don't have to say, hold up, wait. They're going to keep up to your pace. This is psychology. This is how you figure out if a person's willing to follow you. You don't have to give them the instruction. So when you're vetting a woman, that's the simple way to vet them. It's non-communicate. Move in a direction they will come. If they don't come, lead a monkey ass where they stand. That's it. This is simple. All right. Anyway, that's a blue chip. But, you know, if you got to convince them and threaten them and do all of this shit, they ain't with your program anyway. They doing something else. They doing something else. Never let them people uh, 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 do it. But you don't have to tell people to follow. You don't have to tell them, I'm, lead, I'm the leader. All right, uh, that's a waste of your breath. They need, they need to be able to do it. Shout out to uh, Deshaun Rose says, here's your flowers, coach. What's up for the weekend out here? Here we go. What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? All right, shout out to you. Shout out to Michael. Franklin says, appreciate the lessons. Uh, that's what we'll call you. I messed it up. All right, but shout out to you. Thank you. All right, Damien says, thank you uh, for going in on him, coach. That was from earlier. Shout out to Be Real Mahogany. When I hear strong and independent, boss, bitch, et cetera, I hear a baby's first words, goo goo, gaga, nonsense. Mm. Facts. If a woman has to say she's strong and independent, she's asking for someone strong and independent. All right. And there are no boss babes when it comes to CGA. All right. I dated women that had made mad money. Big legal lawyers, all of that shit. When you're around me, femininity is of the priority. I don't care what you do at your job, but you're going to check your job at the door when you're dealing with CGA. If you think you're going to put your job over me, all right, it ain't going to work. And, the, and I also follow the same thing with her. So if I'm, if I'm dealing with a woman, I'm, I don't say my job dictates that I lead you. My income dictates that I lead you. Okay, I lost relationships where a woman was like, hey, I'm, a, I'm in a better position than you, therefore I lead. And then she led me right into the damn black hole. Okay, so my job, my situation is not what leads me, neither is yours. So I'm not going to leverage my job and put you in the, the passenger seat. Therefore, I am, for instance, I don't let women drive me. I don't let women drive me in a car. Ninja, if I do, Ninja, I'll be ready, I'll be I'll be clutching the damn. I'll be like, oh, shit. I'll be like, oh, hell no. I don't let my mother drive me. I don't let my wife drive me. My ex-wife, I don't let my, my, my daughter drive me. I don't let any woman drive me in a car. I'm always going to drive the car. Where are we going? <laughs> Tell me where I'm going. Sit over there. So that's just establishing that I'm going to be in the driver's seat. All right, because they be driving slow. They be driving hot behind school buses and semi-trucks. You like, ninja, get over the lane, <laughs> all right? Mm. But ladies, I'm going to just let you know. Uh, I'm going to just let you know. Only Uber drivers. Only Uber drivers, okay? I can't control that. But 
They be driving behind school buses. I'm like, man, the fast lane open. But ladies, when you ride with me, I'll be like, zoom. <laughs> I drive like I'm on a ski slope. I'll be zoom. <laughs> so when you ride with me, women be like, oh, no, peace leave leaking. All right, but to me, leadership is, <laughs> leadership is, I'm in the driver's seat. It's a demonstration that I'm in the lead here. I'm, I'm leading this shit. All right, I don't have to say it. But where are we going? And I've been in situations where it's her car. I'm driving that bitch. <laughs> All right. All right. Even if it's her car, she ain't driving me nowhere. <laughs> Give me the keys. All right. She'd be like, all right, you ready to go? Yep. All right. She'd be like, oh, let, let, let's go in my car. Okay. Give me the keys. <laughs> All right. You ain't driving me. All right. Anyway, uh, let me see here. That, that's just kind of how I grew up. That's kind of how I grew up. That's kind of how I do stuff. All right, man. The only time she's going to drive is if I need a break and we driving cross country. All right, that's it. And even then, I can't even relax. Uh, Anyway. <laughs> All right, yep. Shout out to Kaylin says uh, men have men have had to work like crazy while sustaining a marriage and family for the longest. Women aren't built to do what men do. This is a fact. That, this is a fact. The reason why you're seeing burnout is because they're not built for this. And this is a hard reality that they have to accept. When I hear this, I don't hear how can we solve it. I hear you ain't built for this. And it's it, you know, like what's the problem with that? You're not built to work and grind and support and fop and, and lead 100%. You're not built for it. You're not built for the, when I hear, well, we're stressed and we're anxious and we're depressed. I hear you're not built for this. Same as if a man says it. Okay, Ninja. Well, at least I can tell a man, you need to uh, boss up, Ninja. But when I hear a woman say, well, we're depressed and we're stressed and we don't have work-life balance, you ain't built for this. Because the same time I see y'all bitches out at the nightclub. Same time I see y'all out here smoking and, and, and drinking. Same time I see y'all with y'all legs and toes point to the sky. So you obviously can do that easily. But all of a sudden when it's time to put in that work, Ninja all the way to age 65, they start tapping out. <laughs> all right, come on, man. They all of a sudden, when it's time to go out and go on a date, that's all expense paid and go on trips. They got energy and time. But now when it's time to put in that work and lead, they want to tap out. All right, let's do what you do best. Let me make you do what you do best. <laughs> all right. <laughs> People in here like this ninja, a whole misogynist. It is what it is. You ain't built for this. And God didn't intend for you. Neither did nature to grind this shit out. Now, let's assume position. Let's know each other's role. And everybody shut their mouth. Let's play your role. Shout out to Kaylin says. Feminism has made uh, women worse. It hasn't made them smarter or more feminine. It's made them unbearable. We need polygamy and arranged marriages again. Indeed. <laughs> Ladies be trying to tell me something. I'll be like, shh, 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 shh. You ever do that? Hey, do that, guys, if you're all still messing with women and you're in the leadership. They start yapping about anything. Activism. They can't hack it. Ninjas they can't find. They start talking really in a low voice. Just put your fingers to their lips very lightly like this. Touch the bottom lip only like this. <laughs> they be all hyped in. Ah. Hey. We don't need all that. <laughs> you don't have to hey, screaming and yelling at them don't work. Just they'll they'll do <laughs> I do it all the time. They be like <laughs> All right, man, just, just, hey, just, 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 we don't need all that talk, right? Now. Just, you, you worried about too much. You, you got too much. Just, <laughs> they don't know what to do, man. It's crazy, man. They ain't never dealt with this because they, they used to then just letting them rant and rave. You ain't going to rant and rave around me. You ain't going to rant and rave around me. <laughs> if you start ranting and raving, I'm going to shut it down. Shut up. Just. 
You headed the wrong way, baby. <laughs> All right, shout out to Mr. Russell. Jahari says, I don't believe in postpartum depression because when they go to work, they put on a work face for their white boss. He says they can sit at the desk for eight hours and be cordial. They full of ish. Facts. Facts. They know when to cooperate, man. They know when to cooperate. So that's the point he's making. The women that say in postpartum depression, all of a sudden can go to work and, and make it through the day. All right. And get that check. But then when they come back to you, they want to act up. All right. No, 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 nope. <laughs> but that's facts. Shout out to Kevin W says on that list you showed, I noticed how uh, women prioritize a company's diversity, but it's nowhere near the top five for men. Men just want to get a job done and take advantage of hypergamy. Women just want to look like they are inclusive, but will actually discriminate against men. Yeah, hard reality there. You're seeing it right there. And we're different. We're different. All right, we're just simply different people. All right, we got a couple more, man. Thank you for sitting through these. We got a couple more answers to dish out. Uh, Mr. DMC in the building, according to how my able body and sound mind are set up, you are on your own, Reverend X, please. Shout out to you. You're... I don't give a fuck with you, Indeed. Think, bitch. Cut that bitch off. Yeah. Next call. Hey, for me, for me, activist women and people, oh, I believe in inclusion and I believe. I never want to discuss those things. I never. If, if you're around me and you discuss them or you'll be like, I can't believe you said that. You got to understand to be inclusive of people. If I say, look at this tippy toe ninja. Hey, ladies, you better eat that. You better eat it or you ain't going to be eating dinner. That's what you ain't going to be eating. <laughs> All right. But people that be like, come on, you're a barbarian Neanderthal. Oh, my God, you're not inclusive. You really believe that about shut up. I'm just letting you know. Let me get my let me get my Archie Bunker shit out. Mm. Let me get my Archie Bunker George Jefferson shit on. You know what I mean? Let me get my shit off without you. Try to put me in line. Uh-uh. <laughs> right. Oh, gosh. Wow. You really didn't believe that about me? Man, shut up. All right. I just said what I said. But I, I, don't, trust, I don't trust people who um, are activists and or um, virtue signalers. I don't. I, you, you can't be a virtue signaler around me at all. Yep. I'll be like, there's two genders. <gasps> what? I'm going to straight up eliminate you. You done, all right? Conversation over, lose my number. All right, you're going to get kicked about, you're going to get kicked out of here. Now, you can have your belief system, but do not push that shit on me. <laughs> and the reason why is I don't push my belief system on women. I don't. I don't tell them, well, you got to believe the way I believe or you out. Now, you can have your own belief and you can go outside with your own belief, but when it comes to this, I'm not pushing my belief system on you. I push my philosophy, how I dictate, how I'm going to treat you and you're going to treat me. But I don't believe, I don't push my belief system on, on, on any woman or any person. You either disagree with me and we cool or we agree and we're cool. But what you ain't going to do is turn me into your belief system by trying to virtue signal. And most of the time, you, they be in violation and being discriminate. They discriminate. So I, I think a lot of women lose men that way, and then they wonder why. Because you're, you're literally the worst embodiment of a human being, a virtue signaler. You do it for attention. And you discriminate against another group of people, like, willingly. Like, right in my face. Like, I think a lot of pro-black women, like, they hate white women. And they hate white people. And then be mad if I discriminate against somebody. And then they be talking shit about white people. I'll be like, nah, not on my watch. <laughs> Them white people be, nah, -uh. nah, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna do that around me. And get mad when I talk about these ninjas walking around with bald heads and blouses and high heels and shit and capri pants in Atlanta. You ain't about to do that to me. <laughs> All right, you ain't, you, you sure ain't about to be out here playing. Uh, straddle fence and then be a racist at the same time. <laughs> right. 
if I, if a black woman's around me or a Latino woman and she says something negative about white people around me, I'm done with her. Done. I canceled a Latina chick because she was racist against white people. I was like, nah. Now, I'll tend to be racist against everybody. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right? All right. That's how I do it. Ninja, I'm an equal opportunist. I'm talking about everybody. Everybody can catch wreck. All right. So everybody catching that smoke. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we talking about everybody. We ain't going to big up one race of people and then be racist against the oppressor. Oh, hell no. Nah. All right. Anyway, we, we getting everybody. I'm getting everybody. Black people, white people. I'm getting black men, white men. I'm, I'm, I'm catching everybody's neck. Gay people, trans, everybody catching wreck in my opinion. But don't come over here and tell me I'm wrong and then you're going to be racist over here. <laughs> All right, let me stop. All right, anyway. Yep, I'm equal opportunity hater. I'm racist against everybody when it, when it needs to be. When I need to be, I will get. <laughs> I'm catching everybody neck. All right, uh, let me see here. Because people need their neck caught. It don't matter who they are. So if I go in on you, it ain't because you race or gender or gay. It's because of who you are at the moment I see you. So I'm going to get you. All right, let me stop. <laughs> Where are we at? All right, Faith says, one last question, Coach. I don't care if I am a misogynist. Faith is a woman. She says, I don't like working under women. My supervisor is a woman, and she's cool, but sometimes I don't want to talk. I just want to work and go home. My best jobs are under male leadership. They let me do my job and leave me alone. That's the workplace. That's the workplace. I've worked for several female supervisors and bosses, um, and they all were slightly different. One was overbearing and a very aggressive woman. One was like she tried to be cool, but she talked too much. One was kind of disappeared and <laughs> like was kind of just like aloof and couldn't handle the situation. And um, I've seen kind of all type of uh, female supervision. The ones I hated the most was the talking boss. The one They made it difficult to work. They're trying to be friends and wanted to meet on everything and couldn't make a decision without a powwow. And everything just took too long to get to point A and point B. Then I realized the overbearing boss was more in my liking. And uh, she did not hold back. I had an overbearing female boss. She let you know what was up. Right then, all right, She her work ethic wasn't good, but her management was great, all right? And I actually had not worked for another female boss who um, delegated. She was a delegator, and she gave you leverage and leeway to make decisions, but if she didn't like your decisions, she'd call you out. But at the same time, if you made good decisions, she didn't say nothing. She stayed out of the way. So I, I've had different types of female leadership. And all of them looking back, they had their plus and minuses. The delegator was gone. Then I had a, uh, um, a female boss that was gone but aloof, right? So there were two different gones. But I had a female boss that was a delegator. She was great at delegating. Like, she wasn't going to do – she knew what she was going to do, and you were going to do the rest. But um, there's different types of female bosses. But what I've learned is the best way to lead people is not that friendly bullshit. The weak people want that friendly shit. You know, we're we're a team and we're a family. And, and, and I'm not your boss. I'm your partner. Mm. The statistics will tell you otherwise that, you know, yeah, I feel like I'm in a family. This is woman shit. Ninja, I want my boss to look up over me like this. Ninja, get to work. <laughs> All right, tied to real. If they became housewife, who's going to pay off their student loans? Coaches, right? About us being a utility. Facts. Mm. Facts. Who going to pay off the student loans? She didn't mention she was in debt, did she? Xavion off topic, but Coach Radamus strikes again. Just read an article about unvaxxed sperm being on high demand from would-be moms. Some women are paying up to $7,000 for ideal donors. Men are winning. Facts. Right? It's what it is. I normally, I normally just want to work and go home. Like, tell me what I'm supposed to do. All right? Like, what, what is my parameters? And then once you tell me, leave me alone. <laughs> like, okay, I'll get that done. I got you. But I'm, I'm kind of a, 
self-starter. Okay, somebody says, we're called partners at my job. I'm a self-starter and I finish. I literally going to give you great quality work. But um, shout out to you on the sperm thing. I actually covered it this week. Coach Radamas for the win again. El Santo. Something for the pot, Coach. Goat. Rent is due, and we almost done. Your rent's due, motherfucker. Shout out to DMC. Uh, J Flow says, Coach, you are the master of F all these jive coolies in the building. I think that's what you said. Coach Gang. Yep. I literally want people to stay, just stay out of my way. I'm not a good team player, too, by the way. I'm a little bit of the wide receiver diva type. But I will thump my chest. I will I will tell you when I'm doing work, right? I will tell you where I'm beating your ass. I'm a little competitive that way. And I will tell you when I'm making shit happen. But if I need to get it done, I'm going to get the job done. Nobody has ever got me except when I was 16 and I worked with the Mexicans. They didn't think I worked very hard. They called me no trabajo. That was like, he no work, <laughs> right? But I'm not a bare minimum guy. I don't need, I just need you. What, what's the assignment? Okay, boom, I got it. And then I do the work. Stay out, stay out my way. Stay out my way. Now, a lot of people can't do that. They literally got to wait for somebody to complete the job before they complete the job. And then somebody delays, then there's a bottleneck. And then I can't do my job. And then we need a meeting as to why there's a bottleneck. I mean, I'll be like, yeah, everybody get out the way. <laughs> All right, that's kind of how I do work. Man, get everybody. Man. So then I'm kind of a disruptor at work. But at the same time, I get the work done. Why everybody don't? Shout out to Justin O. Coach Son said, Dad, I want to be a free agent lifestyle. For life. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ennis, Ennis or Ennis says, Coach, what's the intervals between generations 10 to 15 years? It's usually that 15 to 20 year gap. So it's normally around that, like something just prior to 20 years. The problem is, um, I mean, there's people have the ages pretty much down. It could be up to, let's see here. It could be up to 15, 15 to 18 years. And there's some gaps in between because there's some people who are generation X, but they young and they're trend millennials. So they're zennials. There's Generation Zoomer that are people are are Generation Z, but they're 24, right? And they trend the uh, Zennials, they call them Zennials. So there's some overflowing gap. I'm Generation X on the younger side, so but I act like a boomer <laughs> in many ways. So 15, 15, 17 years, 18 years is kind of what the generations are are. But again, there's a lot of overlap. And some people can be a millennial. Like I know a young woman. I've known her for a long time. She's a, I think she's a millennial, but she's the youngest possible millennial. Like a year prior, she would be a Zoom baby boom. I mean, she'd be a Zoomer. So she's a Zennial. So when we talk about millennials, she's the youngest possible millennial. She's like right on the borderline. But a year prior, she was a year younger, she'd be a, a Generation Z. And her sister is Generation Z. And she's only three years younger. So that's kind of how it goes. All right, what are we doing here? JC says, Coach, I'm glad I got two streams to catch up on, unlike those free agents who will be clutching their pillow like Stewie Griffin all weekend. They're going to miss one for sure. Montreal, man, Damn, Montreal Mandem coach, what do you think the role of women will play when artificial artificial wounds become a reality? I think women are going to use it more than men. That's why. I mean, a lot of people think men are going to benefit from it, but it's going to be the opposite. I think women are going to then just abandon using men as a means to procreate. Now, I don't know when this is going to come, but we're going to cre basically create a society where men are going to be even push to the brink of um push to the brink of um reproduction. They'll have to make choices. And it's gonna be expensive as hell initially. So most people aren't gonna be able to afford it for like 50 years, maybe or so once it arrives. It's gonna be almost unattainable. Similar to surrogacy, sperm donor, similar to IVF. 
it's going to be literally unattainable for most people. But I think women are going to overwhelmingly latch on to it. We think men are going to do it, but men are going to look at that expense and not do it. For instance, surrogacy is an option for men, and men overwhelmingly don't use it. It's not until a woman comes along that he will consider surrogacy, and it's normally through the woman's too old to throw good eggs, so they'll throw it over to a surrogate. So surrogacy is available today, and men don't use it. It's the same thing as, it's going to be the same thing as uh, artificial womb. Men are going to sit back, you know what I mean? And they're going to want to put nut in a woman. They're going to put, put like, like guys are still right here. But I want a legacy. And what you want to do is bust a nut in a woman in a loving uh, sexual uh, experience. You want the woman to love you and raise your family. Ninja, if you want kids, there's viable options. And then they say, I can't afford it. Well, I'll just nut in this woman. And then you get. <laughs> so, again, like I said, these things men think. We think there's going to be an uh, overwhelmingly majority of men that will just eliminate women and just have their babies in artificial womb. Nope. Women going to run to it. Older women going to run to it. Career women going to run to it. They going to spend the money. Old women getting married at fit. Dude, you think it's crazy now? We going to have old ass women in the next 20 years getting married up, trying to have babies like 50. <laughs> All right, shout out to our brother Chris with the co-sponsorship as we end the show. I'm rich, he says, paying dues for the big brother I never had. Shout out to you, brother. Appreciate you. Well, we'll call you Mr. B. I'll give you the Undertaker, bro. I don't know. Yeah, romantic ninjas. All right, I want to have kids, coach. Okay, there's adoption, surrogacy. You could have kids overseas. All right. You can have an IVF. You can sign a co-parenting agreement with the woman up front that ensures you get 50-50 custody or whatever custody you want. You can do all of that. Do you guys realize that? You can have a co-parenting agreement before you have a child. Now, it doesn't mean she's going to, I mean, you can sue her if she violates it. However, before you get a woman pregnant, you can literally sign a co-parenting agreement ensuring custody goes a certain way. Then just still ain't gonna do it. You still want to lay in between the woman's legs in love and bust a nut in her in her guts and then deliver a baby artificially. That's what you want. He says, No, we can't do that. And we can do that, actually. <laughs> All right. So that's what they're saying. He says that would be really bad for us in the future. Uh the far off we go. You actually can do co-parenting prior to pregnancy. All right. Just do your due diligence, co-parenting agreement. Prior, prior to pregnancy. Now, the, the way you're going to lose leverage is you're going you're gonna to get her pregnant first and then try to get a co-parenting agreement. That's how dumb ninja's going to do it. But you lost leverage then. <laughs> right? You lost leverage then. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to get child support either. So child support, you can't negotiate. Look, pre-birth custody agreement. Pre-birth custody agreement. Let me just show you. And I'm here to educate. It's called pre-birth custody agreement. Custody change. New birth, newborn pre-birth custody agreement. You could do this. It's doable. It's legal. Okay? But, but dumb ninjas ain't going to do it. What you're going to do is get her knocked up, and then you're going to rush over here with the papers. Hey, baby, can you sign this? It's too late. <laughs> okay? <laughs> She's not going to sign it. There's no reason for her to sign it now. It's over. You can write up a custody agreement on your own. And it says right here, you don't want to pay a high power lawyer, blah, blah, blah. What should I consider with my newborn custody agreement prior to pregnancy? You have to do this prior to pregnancy. You can discuss uh, what school they go to, legal and joint custody, all of that. These are all options. But... But what do ninjas do? Well, I want love and you want to bust in her guts and then have it in love and take family pictures. And then, then, then you end up like most black men do and most men do legally. You end up like that goofy ass ninja with uh, Kiki Palmer. <laughs> right. Then you end up trying to fight the system. No. No, 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 no. Guys, there's options for you. 
All right. And if you if that's what you want to do, roll the dice. Roll the dice. Most men do not raise their children from completion. Most men do not. They do not. Especially black men. Most of you guys are out of your kid's life before year three. <laughs> right? Before three years. All right. You completely excommunicated from that child. Most. All right. Statistically. And then when you take America in general, it's like 50-50. There's a 50-50 chance. Roll the dice. So you got that co-parenting agreement. You have a surrogacy. And your dumb ass going to say, well, I can't afford surrogacy. What does it cost? $125,000. I can't afford it. Well, you can't afford no kids. And then just sit your monkey ass down. <laughs> what thinks you can't afford kids if you can't afford a surrogate? Sit down. You want to have kids, ass ninja, but can't afford the surrogacy. Well, I got to pay the lawyer, the woman. The... That's what kids are, expensive. You're paying the child support up front. So that you don't deal with child support on the back end. Ninjas never want to pay up front. Ninjas never want to pay up front. They think it's dumb and tricking and, and non-sex, non-romantic. Well, it's not going to be romantic. Okay, have kids overseas then. Go to Dominican Republic, have kids overseas. Well, I'll never get to see them. Yo, you don't see your kids today, Ninja. They live around the corner. You can't see them. They live 10 minutes across town. You can't see your kids. What the hell are you talking about? It take a two-parent household. I want my kids to be in a two-parent household. Ninja, you can have your kids overseas. You'll still see them more than some of these dumb, dusty-ass, no-child-support-paying-ass ninja see their kids right now. And they kids live two blocks away. Mm. They at the door at their baby mama's house. Can I see my kid? And they live two minutes away. They got to go see their kid at the bus stop. <laughs> Ninja, you have your kids in the Dominican Republic. You take four trips during the winter. In the summer, you kick it with them all summer. You done seen your kids way more than these goofy-ass ninjas see their kid right now in Columbus, Ohio. There's ninjas that ain't never seen high nor hair of their kids. And they live in America. Mm. <laughs> all right? Come on, fam. Your kids all the way over halfway across the damn America, and you won't go from Florida to the Dominican and have some kids. Uh, <laughs> what they want is romance. They're trying to def they're trying to take my philosophy and put love back at the forefront. Well, I want to have kids, so to hell with your philosophy. Uh, okay, roll the dice. Mm. <laughs> all right, roll the dice. That's all I can tell you, man. You trying to put love back in there, and you want to have a love a love child. Just say you want to have a love child. All right, look. Let's get up out of here, man. I think I got everybody, but let me let, let me clear the deck. All right, where we at here? Shout out to, okay, I got everybody. I think I got everybody. I appreciate the support. Hey, Saturday, we will have our football stream on CGA Got Game channel. Sunday, locals in the morning, and we will have Money Mindset in the morning as well. So I will announce that early on so you know because we won't have Sunday evening Money Mindset. And if you miss it, catch the replay. Shout out to the Coach Gang. <laughs> And we out of here. Let me make sure. Let me make sure I have all the chats before we go, because I don't want to miss a brother uh, who has contributed hard earned money to this show. See, I was about to. No, uh, I think I was about to miss somebody. Did I get your boy here? Oh, see, I was about to miss him because he came in with a long ass chat. All right, so let me get him before we go, and um, let's see where he takes us. This is our brother Benjamin says, Coach. Uh, yes, Coach. Archive in the fight. This is a long one. Archive in the five figures is unlocking a mental barrier or what is possible. My family, specifically my mother, tries to guilt trip me to hand her money. I met my mom. He says, my mother and I will go like in. Okay, this is a long one. <laughs> All right. But look, man. Yo. Yo. I'm rich, man. All right. Shout out to you. Your mother guilt strips you and essentially saying you owe her money. I raised her. You owe me. And uh, I told her if she did not sabotage my education and training that I would have to struggle till my 30s. She got mad at me and thought about your quote. You have to be colder than a Russian winner. And it is so true. If you win, everybody wants a piece. When you lose, nobody cares. Even and even tells you to man up. You are the king of kings, the speaker of truth. And your live streams help me stay in my lane and not get weak again. 
I was raised by a single mother. All right. Whew. Shout out to the coach game. And we out of here. Peace. What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga?